This is being broadcast by the Department of Defense of the Republic. At 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, multiple unidentified objects were confirmed to have entered Earth's atmosphere. Discovery Houston, 20 seconds to LOS Tedris. The first message that comes to you is you are a divine being. You matter. You count. You come from realms of unimaginable power and life, and you will return to those realms. The vast stretches of the unknown and the unanswered and the unfinished still far outstrip our collective comprehension. Broadcasting from Forest Tower Studios, all the way from the Deep South. Now, here is your host, Joe Root. Man, I told you we'd be here, and we're here. This is Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Root, and we are broadcasting from the great American South, from Forest Tower Studios, all across the world wide web. Thank you for joining us tonight. It is Wednesday, August the 8th. We're 32 weeks in. I mean, this year is almost over. Tonight, we're going to be talking a little astral travel. But before we get into it, I got to tell you to make sure that you do this. You got to fire up your chakras, sink both hemispheres of your brain together, and shoot your magical beam of light through your third eye tonight with us as we peer into the void on our search for truth. We're going to open up the phones a little later. That number is 1 800 588 0335. That's 1 800 588 0335. That number is toll-free from the United States or Canada. We're also live on LightingTheVoid.com, KTLK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM, and our lovely, cool people over at TalkStream Live and the Paranormal Radio app. Also, The Fringe FM has an app you can download in the iTunes or Google Play stores. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool, man. I was worried. Last night we had a little bit of an issue. David Matheson was supposed to be on the show, and the server did a little bit of a dive. I'll talk about that in just a second. But uh, if for any reason uh, you guys have those kind of same issues, I always give out the talk stream live listen line for that reason. I know people get tired of hearing it, but one of these days you're going to be glad that you saved it to your phone. And that number is 701-719-3971. Tonight we're going to be speaking with Greg Doyle. He's going to join us on Lighting the Void. Now I have talk to him on another show but i think this is his i believe this is his first time being on this show and i love 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 this subject astral travel how you and i both can lift off and get out out as well of the body i guess you could say depends on how you look at it but that's the way i look at it but i love the subject i know you do too so it's going to be a pretty interesting night greg has got a new course out that talks about this stuff and um We're going to get into some of that. I hope he's going to give us some uh, pointers. And I'll tell you about an experience because I did take, I'm actually taking the course, and I did go through some of it. And I had my own experience with it, too. Pretty interesting. We'll get into that as well. Tomorrow night, we're doing our first New Moon special with the one and only Mary Ducina. And we'll be doing a broadcast this Friday night to make up for last night. Pretty cool that we left Friday nights open just for that, to make up for last night as David Matheson will be on the air, whether you like it or not. I want to say thank you to all who have donated to the show. I'm almost done with the commercial-free archives in my dream journal. Uh, the If you haven't donated in a while, I'm asking you to please do so, because we could surely, surely use it. Um, I've got almost 200 episodes in the podcast archives that I'm about to rip out, and it's not it's not a big deal. It's just like... I do. I'm going to do as much as I can for free as long as I can. But then, at some point, you've got to. Once you get this thing rolling, it's got to stay rolling. Or I don't want it to go down. What do you want? You want me to take lighting the void to another network? I'm not. I don't want to do that. But this show's not going to die. Speaking of, there's other ways though you can help. You can get a doesn't cost you any money. A free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash LTV Radio. You get a free audio book. Uh, I would say this for a future show. If you want to get an audio book, grab uh, Dr. Dean Radin's audio book about real magic because he's coming on next week. So uh, that'd be a good one to get. You can grab a T-shirt. 
There is an Amazon portal on the website. You can click on that, and if you click on that Amazon portal, that will uh, cost you absolutely nothing. But if you're shopping on Amazon already, just remember it, and then as crazy as it sounds, we get a kickback, and that's that's another way you can support the show. And if you just don't want to do any of that, you can leave a review or share the show. Actually, we went up in the charts today on that chart side. I put it up on my Facebook page uh, the social media links, pretty just, I don't know, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Lighting the Void. If you want to email the show, it's contact at lightingthevoid.com. The chat rooms are at lightingthevoid.com forward slash chat. And then you got the one that's uh, in Spreaker. And some we got some folks here already. We got to get into this astral travel thing. But I want, I want to tell you about what happened last night. So it was 10 minutes before I was about to go on. And I want to thank my team, Eric Markham. And Jeremy Scott, who's my program director, and just like a good program di- director, he messages me and says, Joe, the the show is down. Not the show, but the network. Do you know what's going on? I'm trying to restart it. I'm trying to restart it, and it will not restart. So I'm thinking, okay, it's just stuck. These things happen. I am not the guy that's going to think that someone's out to get them, Okay. So I get on there and I look and I see that, yeah, I'm trying to restart it too. And there's this IP address that's got some type of weird Python code that's causing it not to be able to start. I couldn't kick it. I couldn't ban it. I even tried banning the entire country of France to get this thing to leave and it still wouldn't. And I looked up the IP address and the IP address, I couldn't trace it. So I started digging into some of this Python stuff and found out that it was a kind of like a ddos attack but a little bit different so i got a hold of the admins and they at first they said the same thing i don't think this is an attack this looks more like something's hung well what i showed them was well while it's hanging up on their end the data was steadily climbing on the server i mean it went up to like one two gigabytes of data and this is just audio okay 64 kilobytes per second it doesn't make sense so they kind of stopped arguing with me about it and realize that it's a possibility, and we fixed it. So if somebody did try to attack us, I don't think it's the deep state. I know somebody said that. I don't think you're big enough that the deep, dude. You don't. It doesn't have to be the deep state. You can pay a nerd one hundred and fifty dollars to to attack somebody's server. It doesn't mean the deep state's after me. I highly doubt that. But it's all fixed now, and I want to apologize for that. And then another thing I do want to mention that every night it's going to be rich. It's going to be me. And then it's going to be Ryan. So we've got like eight hours of primetime live programming every week on the Fringe FM. And the drive time shows, we've got new ones there. You know, you got John Polk on Thursdays. who's He's moving to Tuesday. You got Mary Ellen Poppick on Mondays. Wednesday night, a new show is coming. Suzanne Ross is going to be doing her show. We're getting that ready this week. Lots of good things coming down the line. Also, if you do... Help me out. I'm asking you guys to help me out on Twitter. I'm trying to figure out how to get more Twitter followers, and I'm looking at some of these people. I'm like, how are they getting all these Twitter followers? How are they doing it? And I get on there, and I find out it's just a a bunch of bots. Like, they go out and get all these just random fake accounts. I don't want to do that. I want to get real real Twitter followers. So if you can, use hashtag LTV radio. Now, it's time to get into our discussion with Greg Doyle about astral travel. I hope you're ready for this. Greg Doyle is the author of Awakening the Giant Within, a personal adventure into the astral realms which details his experiences in the astral world. He holds astral travel workshops, meditation classes, and offers to heal sessions as a Reiki master in Brisbane. As a former professional classical musician, Greg first discovered meditation primarily to combat stage fright. In 1999, he awakened to the reality of the phenomena of astral projection. This was a life-changing experience that expanded his consciousness, changed the course of his career, and altered the very perception of his being at a fundamental level. Greg's healing and meditation work specifically aimed at activating latent potential inside of us. The many benefits include greater concentration, ease of performance, more restorative sleep, and increased general health, well-being, and vitality. Greg works with individuals and groups in both private and corporate settings, and you can check out the website at gregdoyleastral.com. Greg, thank you so much for joining us all the way from Brisbane. I really appreciate you coming out. Hi, Joe. It's great to be here. Love to talk to you on this subject. Fantastic. 
So we talked about this the last time when I was on Spaced Out Radio. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure we did it off the air. You know, you were so good at talking about this, these methods and how to do it and just explaining the whole thing that you had a course in the works, and this thing is out now. And I got to tell you, I'll let you talk about the course a little bit, but I, when you get done, I want to tell what happened to me after I took it. But go ahead and tell people about it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Joe. Look, it, it's great to have something documented in this way that people can actually work with because, um, you know, it just feels. It's funny because I've actually had experiences in the astral where, where this is early on, where I saw myself showing people how to astral travel, like being shown these things in the astral. It's so bizarre. And um, you know, in the beginning, I wrote this book a few years ago, and that was kind of like my astral coming out and. And then people said, can you teach this? And I said, I don't know, because I was doing a talk and um, in the beginning, and then I just tried workshops. And I found that, um, you know, it, it's a funny thing, Joe, because really only a person only knows their own energy field and what's, how they feel and what's going on. But um, I found that, um, yeah, you can, you can um, share these things or some of these techniques and people are, were actually having experiences um, yeah. Did I say Brisbane wrong? I've got an Australian in the chat room making fun of how I said it. I said it wrong, didn't I? <laughs> well, every American does. I mean, it, it, Brisbane. So we say Brisbane. Brisbane, okay. That's it. You got it. But, you know, we always hear Brisbane and, and Canberra, and oh, well, we kind of like that, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I can, I can imagine you getting some. But, I mean, you wouldn't know that. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, with the course, so look. It's it's kind of exciting. It, it's funny, like you know, you talked about that so your your server perhaps being attacked. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny the things that get in the way. Like you, you think, wouldn't everything be supporting and and all these little, like even getting this course up and all these little weird things happening. But I feel, you know, ab above all for me, it's to get this stuff out and share it because I find that people, you know, as you've already ha talked about, you know, people have experiences. Um, it, it is possible to kind of rekindle this sense because I think what I allude to a lot in the course is that it's actually, we are leaving the body when we sleep anyway. So all, all, all I'm doing in this course is, is really waking up that, that body that is going out anyway. So it's kind of more fundamental than people realize, you know, but I'm really passionate about it. So I'm, I'm really happy to share the course. It's great. So what you're saying is, is that most people, uh, and we've heard this, I think, before, but most people are actually out of their body. Are they out of their body every night, or do you have to get to a certain state of during your sleep? Yeah, it's a good question. What I find, what I found is, I remember when I first got out in this realm. Like in the beginning, uh, I would get out, um, you know, just and go into different kind of totally different dimensions. But when I kind of got out like a ghost in this realm, and I'd watch what people were doing when they're sleeping, and um, I found that generally before dawn in, the, in a couple hours before dawn or so their bodies would separate so i'd watch i'd actually see um this translucent body kind of come out um i'd even see people walking around like zombies and i'd even see bodies astral bodies being taken out uh basically into the void or into other um places even ships that they didn't know they were there. Like when I would confront these people or try to, um, you know, interact with them, they were kind of like zombies. It was really weird. And in the beginning, I felt like, like what, 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 what movie am I in? You know, I felt like, um, right. You saw people you know, getting taken away in ships. Yeah. What, what, how, look, you know, it, it, it can sound sinister out of context. Um, certain vibrations would come. Okay. Cause a lot of the astral experience is about waking up to vibrations and, and so, because if you think of it, the 3D is a vibration in itself, you know, simplicity is a sound. So if we raise that vibration or a different vibration comes in, then our energy body, vibrational body, astral body, what you want to call it, goes out of sync with the physical and out. So I'd see certain uh, vibration would come, it would sound like a screaming jet. And um, I would go out with it as well. And I saw all these humans flying out and going onto these huge ships, quite, quite, quite a spectacle. And I think for me, I, I've always been a pretty detached kind of guy. I think that's kind of helped because I, I would look at the, I would look at the whole spectacle of a lot of it rather than getting too bogged down in a lot of the content early on. I know, the, and things started to make sense after a while, but I was just fascinated with this watching people leave their houses like they were just sort of, 
you know, like a scent. It was like they were just a, you know, a scent being so an aroma. <laughs> you know, their bodies just flying up. That's wild. It's amazing. It is wild. It is wild. The last time I talked to you, you said one of the wildest and most profound things to me was that you saw your own death, and that made the hair stand up on my arms, not my neck, for some reason. When you said that, and uh, almost like it was so creepy to think about, but it didn't bother you. Look. Once again, I mean, a lot of these experiences I have, they are guided experiences. So you can kind of, I talk about them in the course too, that sort of cultivating guidance and um, awareness of the actual guides and help. So um, what that particular experience, I heard my own voice, like, a, you know, I, I call him a higher self because he seems to know more than I know. And he, he tends to speak through a kind of resonator. And he said, I, I want to see my own death. So he talks in the first person, but I know... It's it's my own voice, but from a seemingly higher perspective, uh, the feeling of above me seems to. Anyway, so I hard to okay, explain, that, right? I get it. Hard to explain, but but then I would go out of body. So once again, this, the vibrations come out. Hear this voice, and I go, okay, what's going to go on now? And then I found myself uh, in my body as it is. Um, I, I know I recognized the room, and I was, you know, trying to pull myself up on a bed. And I was drowning in in blood. It was quite graphic, and oh. I realized I realized, hang on, okay, <laughs> this is happening. And um, and then I had to let go, and I had to kind of allow myself to die. Um, and it was fascinating. And then my heart was going crazy, and I thought, okay, let go, let go, let go. And then when I actually came to in my physical body, my physical body, the heart wasn't palpitating. So this was, you know. <laughs> It's interesting. A lot of people talk about when you have astral experiences, you have so, such strong heart palpitations that you could have a heart attack. Well, I found that kind of to be rubbish because it's kind of the astral heart that is palpitating, not the physical heart. So it's, but it was an amazing experience, and it was. I think, look, you know, in many I've seen some research in many shamanic uh, circles. They talk about this: um, you dying, you know, going through the process of dying to kind of, I guess, to, to let go of the fear of death if mm. you experience it, you know? So I feel that made me even more detached. And, and you have this tremendous sense when you're out of body that, that you're kind of not going to die on a, on a high level. Like you're not going to not gonna not exist. You're not going to be annihilated. So you lose that fear of annihilation, whatever, the, whatever that way that kind of shows itself in this reality. You really lose that fear. So that was one of the... Um, Early, very full-on experience indeed, yeah. Well, I wanted to tell everybody, and I don't want to give any part of your course away, so I don't get mad at me or upset at me, but I did, you know, it's been so long since anything has happened to me other than a dream or a faint dream that I forgot, and there's this part of a course where you talk about using a chair, and I won't go into the specifics of it, but you can just use your imagination, guys. So I'm listening to it, using, and I was actually really tired, Greg. You know, when I was listening to it, it was just the other night, sitting in this brand new chair, which is quite comfortable. And the next thing I know, I'm listening to you talk about what to do and stuff. And the next thing I know, I'm standing beside the chair. Right? And it feels like a dream. But it wasn't like the first time where it didn't feel like a dream. But this one felt like a dream. And I was like, okay. So I walked out the studio and I saw the kitchen light was on. Now, it's 3 a.m. I'm usually up and at at 3 a.m. And then I, I woke up. Well, I went inside, and, the, and it was off. And I asked Corbin, I said, were you in the house? I mean, were you in the uh, kitchen? He said, yeah, I was just in there five minutes ago getting something to drink. I said, did you turn the light on? He was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, that, I, you know, to me, because that light is never on unless somebody's awake. And how could they have been there at that exact same time? So I did have actually something happen. And I'm just partway through the course. Yeah, that's fantastic, Joe. You know, and, and as you said, it was so simple. Like you're just listening back to something and it happens. And there's a couple of things there. One, one thing I found is um, I remember a friend of mine um, when, I, when I first wrote my book and, and, and talked about how he could go to body and, and, he, and he, he contacted me and said, Greg, you know, is this true? I mean, I, you know, you're you lying. Is it you're making this up? I said, no, no, this, this really happened. And then that night he was very, um, what do you call it, left brain or right brain? I never remember, but he's very analytical. analytical. Uh, and, and that night he had he had an astral experience, and he ran me the next day and said, "Greg, what? Uh, I've never had anything like it." So I find the funny, the little, the smallest things can trigger it off. So in that particular um, sequence, like as you say, I'm talking about 
perhaps not astral tra- trying to do it from bed, you know, maybe experimenting with a reclining chair or whatever. And then immediately you had some kind of thing. And so I think there's, um, I don't know, I, I kind of see it like little, I don't know, there's like little crystalline structures in our body that get get triggered, you know. They just get triggered. And um, that's a fantastic experience you had. That That is a fantastic one. Well, some of the yeah. most... Um According to surveys that I've researched, some of the most commonly reported phenomena associated with out-of-the-body experiences, and this is based on 16,185 responses, is they experience 98% of the people that did these surveys experienced a jolt or a jerk, where they were jolted or jerked awake. They also experienced sounds such as buzzing, humming, or roaring. Now, I've had that one when I had my first experience. Um... And experience vibrations or high energy sensations, floating, sinking, or spinning sensations, and sleep paralysis, or flying in a dream. Flying in a dream would be considered, I guess, an unconscious out of body of experience, or would it? I think it is, but then you could be dreaming. That's the that's the difference, to me. Mm, yeah, good way of putting it. I think if you, I've had this conversation with some someone the other day. I think if you're flying and you're able to, you become lucid in the dream. If you do then um, make the intent to want to go astral, you will feel a rush of energy and you feel your consciousness become hyper-aware. So it's a, it's a question of level of consciousness, but it definitely is a way of getting there. I think flying in a dream is kind of reminding us of our, of our true astral state. Otherwise, it wouldn't feel so normal in the dream because how many of us actually fly in 3D? So I think th- it is related. It's almost like um, a dream imprint of of the astral experience, and and as a result, because it is a dream imprint, uh, the the memory or the vibration or the setting of it in our field can actually cause it to be portal to go into the astral. So it's kind of it's kind of on the precipice of the astral experience. And uh, Lily is, I believe, Lily is from Australia as well, and wants to know that if you and this is from the Spreaker chat, and uh, she wants to know if you've ever had an experience within Aboriginal dreaming. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> I had a dream, uh, Walker from, I guess, I'm him land. I can't pronounce that. Take me into dreams of someone else's while they were awake and I was asleep and I was seeing everything through their eyes. That's pretty trippy. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. You can, um, you can kind of embody, um, other beings. Other people? Still, one, one, you can, one, one of the, one of the sort of past I'm used to early on because I had no idea what was going on when I was getting out. I'd get out when I get out in this reality. I would, um, I would allow people. Well, say they're walking along. I would um, walk into their body, and when I was in their body, I I, I knew exactly um, what was going on in their life. I knew everything about them, their emotional state in a split second, and it was like I was looking at the world through them, and and it. it for me, it was interesting because I was looking at the mechanics of what it means to be a human being. It, it's so vastly changed. I actually uh, kind of like uh, having had these experiences and to see the kind of realm we live in. I don't, I don't see it as as a negative. Funnily enough, I see there's a lot of potential there, and, and um, so and also being animals as well. So I think that goes into the shamanic realms. This notion of, and then when you become that animal, you you're more likely to move like that animal and think like that animal. Um, but the, the the Aboriginal dream time thing, I actually haven't. It's funny. Uh, I've had dreams. I think I mentioned to you last time. On the last time we spoke about um, a Native Americans, so I've I've had um, initiations with them um, in the astral. And the funny thing is, I've had no, uh, you know, real strong attraction um, to that. But ever since that, the, then of course I did gather an attraction. So. Often, um, you know, and even Mongolian, um, uh, African stuff has gone on and, and alien stuff. So it's kind of, I, I allow myself to be kind of um, totally detached from things and, until I have the experience. That Then it becomes a part of my energetic vocabulary, if you like. I do remember you saying that now, that you, because I remember asking you about the Aboriginal thing, because... Uh, but you said no. I, it was more native uh, Indian, which is kind of, that's awful strange. But it is, there's a lot of strange, unexplained <laughs> things that happen that I just want to be explained. And I don't know if they 
they can all be explained. Like, uh, for instance, this kind of reminds me of the instance that Joe Rogan talked about when he said he had a dream that that he was a wolf, you know, chasing a deer, and he, and, you know, and he saw like black and white, not real color like, but he he knew there was deer around. He didn't see them, but he could smell their fear, and that fear made him actually get crazy like he wanted to hunt them down and he said i felt and and viewed everything as if i was a wolf now he was trying to convince people it was all in his mind but the way the way he described it convinced me that maybe he was actually maybe he was in a wolf who knows you know oh totally that that to me absolutely absolutely i mean if you think of it you know all of the important stuff that we deal with even as a human is invisible um, any kind of relationship we have to anything, it's really the invisible stuff. It's not the um, the object, person, place per se. It's the relationship to that, which is um, essentially invisible. And you think of, you know, air is, is, is invisible to our eyes, yet without it we couldn't live. So I think consciousness, um, you know, it, it is so... Um, almost lame to, to think that our consciousness isn't something that it can move around and um, the, the notion that we're localized even within our mind the mind is within our brain you know this is something um, and I talk about a lot in the course to this notion of having a mind that is all through your body and around your body so you, you kind of develop this other sense um, and I can well understand that guy saying that he, he that that hunger of the wolf you know I remember yeah. um, you know I, I've, I fell into people's even people's thoughts and things it's fascinating when i'm astral and i know it i know the taste of it i know i know exactly what they're on about yeah he said i couldn't <laughs> see the deer but I, you know i just knew it as soon yeah. as i smelt it i smelt their fear and that we started howling and we got all crazy and i yeah. just knew i had to hunt them down he said it was the craziest most primal thing or dream he's ever done i'd have to find a clip when he talks about that one of these days because i'm sure i'm butchering it but, you, you know, just so many wild experiences people talk about. Out of 16,185 responses, now this is at astralinfo.org, you told me about a time that you were actually lifted uh, when you were camping in a tent. Now, that one was the one that was really wild, very kind of hard for me to believe because it's so wild. But did you know that actually 33% of this crowd has the same, have been touched or have felt lifted as well? 33% of 16,185 people. That's a large wow, number. That, that, that is amazing, Joe, because I haven't done such research myself. So that is that is absolutely amazing. And, you know, th stuff's going on. <laughs> There's stuff going on. And, and, and to me also, it was kind of a bit of a game changer because it was the astral energies um, coming into this realm and, and you know, yeah, as you said, lifting me up and... Um, you know, vibration so intense and I, I kind of got excited and motivated after that because I thought well wow you know this isn't all there is even in the 3d what we what we perceive is the 3d there's a lot more going on and um and so I'm sort of you know I get in a in a I talk about this in the course too in a kind of a playful way I guess I'm obsessed with no, I get it what what is going on and how and 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 to play with it but not in a way that you know, it's, it is like a hunger. For, for me, all of these experiences, like being lifted and, as you say, the wolf, and so many of the astral experiences, there's a feeling of greater touch. You know, it's a feeling of, some people say to me, oh, Greg, you know, you, you, you know, do you become ungrounded? I go, well, actually, the opposite. I think I think at the beginning, for me, I, I did become ungrounded for a while. Then I realized, hang on, I'm grounding into another reality that has more touch. There's just more texture. And um, when it starts to come into this reality, and it, and it kind of the astral really starts to, you know, fall back into this reality and merge with it. You have these amazing experiences, you know, and so that levitation was was just mind blowing for me as well because it just took away more of that reactivity, took away more of the obstacles uh, within my mind and body that stop this from happening. So um, yeah, it's fantastic. That that's amazing numbers you, you just quoted then. Yeah. So what that tells me is is that more people are actually having these experiences uh, and that we need to figure this thing out. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to come back with some more questions for uh, Greg Doyle here, and we're going to talk about some of these uh, methods that we could possibly use to have these experiences and maybe about a little bit of protection too. I've got uh, some book 
couple of books I'll tell you about. I'm going to give away as well. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're here with Greg Doyle. This is Lighting the Void, and I'm Joe Roop. Stick around. News for the Fringe FM, bringing light to the stories that surround us. NASA contest finalists show off their Mars habitat models. Yes, we have yet to successfully send humans to Mars, but we are already starting to think of how we can stay there for long stretches of time or even for good. NASA launched the 3D-printed Habitat Challenge back in 2015 to find a suitable artificial housing for the first wave of Martian residents. And now the agency has narrowed down the contestants to five after seeing the realistic virtual models they've created. You can see the pictures and read more of this interesting story at Engadget.com. And out of Queensbury, New York, a New York couple claimed they saw an unidentified humanoid. The man who sent the anonymous report said that he and his fiancée were driving near Queensbury, New York, when they spotted the strange figure a week ago Sunday at about 12.15 a.m. Quote, I was driving, we pulled off exit 20 southbound, and our car came to a stop. This is what the man reported to MUFON. The eyewitness adds that he proceeded to put on the left blinker and look both ways up the road, and he noticed a tall, slender figure, dressed in black, with stick-like features. He said the entity was about 50 feet away and standing in the middle of the road. He believes it was approximately 10 feet tall. You can read more of the details of this at CryptozoologyNews.com. And Chinese couples are hiring love testers to check their partner's fidelity. Online entrepreneurs in China have found an ingenious way of profiting off couples' paranoia. Renting out love testers who do their very best to try to seduce one of their partners in order to check how faithful they really are. You can read more of this creepy details at oddityCentral.com. And now it's time for this week's fun fact. Boring Oregon and Dull Scotland have been sister cities since 2012. And in 2017... They added Blanchire, Australia to their League of Extraordinary Communities. Boring, dull, and bland. And that wraps it up for another edition of the Stranger Than Fiction News, right here on The Fringe FM. And remember, you can save a life. Don't drive and text. Hey, Fringe FM listeners, did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701-719-3971. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701-719-3971. That's 701-719-3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. The truth is out there. There's something out here. And so are we. KTOK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM.
All right, we're back. Uh, this is Lighting the Void. I'm Joe Roop. We're here with Greg Doyle. And uh, we're talking Asheville Travel tonight. He's got a new course out. We're going to be talking some of these methods. That's a new track from uh, Chronox called Crunch. My man, Chronox. We do the... Mm, Chronox and Bundy does mainly all the music for this show. And I think he's working on a new album right now. So you go check him out. This Chronox music is pretty cool. I love the guy, the guy but uh, Greg, uh, Greg Doyle's here with us. I was trying to say Greg and the guy at the same time, and I got all twisted up. But... um yeah, that's it's. I think Greg that to other people, like more people, are having strange uh, experiences. This kind of validates to me that that consciousness is kind of moving uh, among people more than it used to, unless this has always happened and people just didn't realize it. But another crazy statistic is that uh, almost half of people out of the sixteen thousand felt that. Uh, now, this is commonly reported phenomena associated with out of body experiences. By the way, they felt that. An overwhelming surge of fear created by strange vibrations or sounds, and, and they would have a panic a panic attack either before that event or after. Does that make any sense to you? Does that sound familiar? Yeah, you know, and that and that is um, it's good you touch upon that. I, I'd say that's the crux of my course. That's the crux of my teaching is how to you know giving giving you the tools to actually get over those fears because. You know, it's just so out of the ordinary. I mean, I, I was lucky. I kind of had a free pass because um, the first time this light came into my forehead and, you know, it, it, it came into my heart and made me feel really good. That was my first out-of-body experience. So it felt great. But I remember the next night I was petrified. I didn't go when the, when the light came again. And and so I've had I had many situations early on when I wouldn't go because I was slightly scared. But I found over time because I was being taken out a lot, and I do say being taken out because these vibrations, energies, I've found through my research to be actual beings. They are actual entities. They are intelligences. So they are they are there kind of inviting us out all the time. And it, it makes sense that this is so out of the norm that people get freaked out. You know, it makes sense. You think of it, um, we are so kind of taught and programmed that this is it. You know, it's a nuts and bolts reality. There's, there's nothing else. Everything else is somehow scary. You look at how many movies where even ghosts, I remember, because um, often you will come across those, and and in the beginning, like, oh, I could see aliens and weird entities, but if there was someone who had died, I'd freak out. And it was just pure programming, you know, even though they were being quite normal and talking to me, uh, they'd tell me they died to something, and i go, oh, what, you're a ghost? You know, and here I am, I, you know, I can talk, here I am, the, the astral guy out of body, and I'm getting scared of them. I mean, it's, <laughs> it is so bizarre, and... You know, but like I felt like I was kind of, you know, taken by my feet and, and, and sort of swiveled around a few times and thrown head, head first into a brick wall with my experiences because it was so, I had so many so full on. I was really kind of, in the best sense, my, my sense of reality was shaken to the core. So when I kind of got off that bandwagon, just thought, okay, I like, like so many of my, the, particularly the beginning, so many of the experiences were kind of val validating experiences. I was shown things that I could later verify that that's what that experience was. And so I think a lot of the experiences in my case, um, maybe it knew or whatever whatever's going on, maybe I knew on a higher level that that's what I'd be doing. I'd be getting into extra trouble. But like I was um, so often shown that, oh, it, this was the real thing. So after a while, I remember at the very beginning thinking, was that real? Did that really happen? Did that really happen? Then after a while, I knew it to be so, like my body knew it to be real. And it, and it takes a while to take this stuff on board because we have all these programs running from, from a fear base. You think of the notion of simplistically even just the news. Generally, there's the death that yeah. is programmed in. So it, there'll be, there'll I mean, be that, some that's happening right now. I mean, like <laughs> I turn on the radio today and everything is about Alex Jones and the deep state trying to, you know, it's always the deep state, the deep state. I'm thinking, well... I'm, I kind of take part in these conspiracies, too, because, you know, uh, I kind of believe that uh, if 16,000 people know about out-of-the-body experiences, Greg, and you've got a course trying to help people actually, you know, uh, hone in their, their uh, I guess you could say, their skills so they can do it when they want to, well, then if we know about it, surely the government knows about it, right? So that kind of freaks me out a little bit, too. What are they doing? Messing with people's dreams and minds? You just don't know. It can get as wild as you can imagine. 
and I, a long, I mean, it wasn't just too many years ago. There's no way I would believe any of this stuff. But once you have your own experience, everything goes out the window, everything. Yeah, you're, you're quite right. And they do know. I remember, I think I mentioned last time too, when there was the, the G20 meeting here, um, all these, I was in my chair uh, doing a bit of meditation and traveling and all these all these guys in suits were in here. Like, my house was full. I was being um, basically really hampered in getting out of body, and then they were gone as soon as it was over. As soon as it was over, so they, it, it, that was fascinating to me too. And also that the fact that there are entities, um, you know, when we dream, uh, you're influenced by, you can be influenced by certain entities. And um, to me, you know, you can think glass half empty, glass half full. I think it's glass half full because we know what we're dealing with, and and also why. You know, and I will, I will uh, talk up my course a bit because I think it helps in this regard. It helps becoming positive. Um, if you have a positive mindset and vibration, these things don't really get to you. Like you know, you, you'll meet entities out there, and and they'll challenge you. And there are ways around all these things. But isn't it better to know know what playing field you're on? You know, and. Um, right. And I also feel that it's it's all rigged for us. It's all in our favor. Like these, you get part, like often the fear, often I remember one time going out of body and this band of, kind of I felt this incredible fear, this band around the earth. And then I you know, saw all these black helicopters. I probably mentioned it last time in UFOs and I was sort of um, shown kind of, you know, these, um, if you like, these deals that have been made between certain ET races and humans to In the astral people. realm or on this realm? Like in the I physical? was shown in the astral realm. Well, in the astral realm, I'm shown the mechanism behind it. So it, it, it's it's hard to put into words. But I remember just as I went through that, I remember feeling this intense fear, but knowing that it wasn't my fear. I knew it was a programmed fear. So once I moved through the band of fear, even though it, I could have, in, in a human body, I would have thought, oh, that's my fear. So I, once as soon as I moved through it, it was gone. And um, see, a lot of the stuff we're feeling uh, isn't us. Uh, there are programs out to, to keep us in that. We can be a clever person. We can be a very clever person, aware of uh, a lot of the conspiracies, but we can be watching a TV show or something. There's an add-on about you know, life insurance, an add-on about something. And even though we're clever, we know it to be what it is, it's still going to resonate with an aspect of your brain. Those, those energies know that because the fact that we're talking about astral travel means that everybody does astral travel. The part of the, that, that, that has to do with that in our brain is resonating now for everyone listening to this show. They're, you know, you're more likely to have an experience just from talking about it. <laughs> so, I like to think that some people are having experiences while they listen to the show. It's my favorite thing to do. My favorite thing to do is to listen to talk radio while I fall asleep. And I think, I really think that a lot that has caused some of the experiences that I've had. But when I read this list of the survey, 16,000 people is a lot of people to be surveying, by the way. Okay, and seeing there's I, I got a few more for you here, Greg, hearing voices or footsteps, almost 40 percent, seeing through closed eyelids, 49 percent of the people reported that they could see through their closed eyelids. I've never heard that. And half the people are saying that. Why am I just now here? And as anybody in the chat room, have you experienced that? Greg, I yeah, yeah, for sure. No, no, I, I have, but that is that is a remarkable statistic. Um, <laughs> um, that is a remarkable statistic. Um, yeah, sometimes I've thought I'm awake, and then because I'm seeing astral through my, so you know, when people see through their eyelids, I think it, I think it, I think it has to do with because um, your astral body is always is always awake. So I think, or is always there. So I think that they're physically asleep and they're actually looking through. Well, that's the way I see it, I guess, from an astral perspective, because it looks like you're looking through your eyelids often. But um, that is um, that is a fascinating statistic. There's stuff going on. And uh, as you say, whether or not it's it's okay now to talk about it or mm. uh, um, whether there's vibrational changes. I mean, look, I kid you not. I mean, when you get out of body, if you get out of body at night, right, you look up in the sky, th there are what we would call UFOs everywhere um not and it's amazing there's so much going on and I, I feel this um we could be being helped by certain interdimensional entities um you know i, I think it just sounds so wild though doesn't it but it's <laughs> it but, does but 
as wild as it sounds, I'm telling you, all it takes is one one experience. That's it, just one. Uh, and 79% of these people, almost all of them said that they felt like they knew they were, they were lucid, right? They were lucid dreaming is what it says. But in other words, they are aware of their dreams. Now, I don't want to just go down list for list here, but I want to stop there. When, when you're lucid in a dream, what do you usually do from that point? What does Greg do? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. What um, what I do now is uh, I used to control the dream. Um, I don't anymore. So what I do now is I let the drama go. So generally in a dream, it's a drama. There's a story. Things are going on. And I think it is part of um, the whole karmic program that we're in. And I think it does have to do with, you know, being reborn into kind of hypnosis. So I find not to control. So I let it go. And then what I will do is I see it as a springboard to an astral experience. So I will then say, okay, I want to go astral. And generally I'll have an intention. I talk about this a bit in the course is, is carrying an intention with you, like a certain kind of a will to want to experience something. A little bit like, you know, you go to the car to go somewhere. You don't just go to the car unless you've got a very, very good car. Well, yeah, you could go to the car. But but generally I will um, have an intention in the dream that I want to go and do something. And then I will feel this energy start to warp around me and I will go astral. And that what that means is I will go from being a lucid state in a dream to a hyper lucid state in the astral and also my surroundings will become hyper real, more real than a dream. Even a lucid dream. So, so you kind I of use, work your way back to yeah, awareness, yeah. maybe a little bit, but not yeah, so yeah. far that you wake up. No, well, it, it, you know, you know, it's a little bit like you, we're on Earth in the three D. I see the moon. I, I see the moon as like a lucid dream, and you've got the sun as as see that as the, as the astral body or an astral uh, the astral realms. So when you're out of the earthly realms, then at least you're you're out of the gravitational pull of the Earth. So say, let's say you're on a, a moon. You know, and um, the notion of the moon, anyway. And then you, you're kind of halfway there because you're out of the physical body. If you can become lucid in a dream, that means you're really starting to wake up. Because, as I see it, like you know, uh, you touched upon it with the Aboriginal dream, dream time before. But I feel that my higher self is wanting me to wake up from this reality. You know, wanting me to go astral, wake up, experience these greater realms. By the same token, I'm wanting my dream, my dream bodies to wake up. So. In dreams, I don't want them to to. They don't need to play out the drama anymore. They don't. The drama isn't isn't so much the story. So you let the drama go. And often in dreams, you know, you let yourself crash the car. You let yourself fall off a cliff. You let you let the person attack you, or whatever, because you know it's a dream. And whenever you let that happen, you have this incredible bliss. And this this bliss tends to um, kind of carry the signature of an astral experience as well. So there are all of these little glitches built into our program. To wake us up, to get us out of body, to 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 make us uh, to help us realize um, what we are, you know, as opposed to the who that we 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 act out in this reality and, and dream. So, a lucid dream is a definite springboard. That's how I see it now. It's purely a springboard. I forget the content of the dream. It's not not important anymore. That's a good. Uh, okay, another good question by Lily. Is it possible to move objects in the astral realm? According to Robert Monroe and uh, Daskalos, they both have encountered, in, uh, interacted with the physical realm. This is something that really fascinates me. Because uh, if that's true, then that could explain a lot of paranormal phenomena. Yeah, I would say I would say that is the case for par- paranormal phenomena. If you you can, um, and the thing the thing is, if you get enough, you know, it's like. Like it's really easy to move objects around the astral, okay? And you feel it. You feel your brain start to, an aspect of your brain switches on that you don't normally have, and you, and you know it. It's like a sense, and you think, well, why can't I have that sense in the physical realms? You know, why can't I <laughs> do that when I'm in, just in 3D? But I think, I think the astral serves to kind of wake up to to what we are, and then we are to carry these things over into the physical. I think that's what it's about. It's about kind of everything meshing, you know. So we. We're kind of grounding into a, um, a higher state, three three D, if you like. But um, I think if there's enough psychic energy involved, enough energy, um, yeah, you can move things. 
Absolutely. Well, what about this uh, on the, on that subject? Uh, Monroe talked about pinching a woman, um, and I've brought this up before, but I never really thought about it this way. He he would run into people's dream bodies or astral bodies or whatever you want to call whatever anybody yeah. wants to call them. It doesn't matter to me, but he would run into them, and he would say, "Look, I'm you know he did these things scientifically." He asked this one woman, you know, I'm talking to you. Are you going to remember this? And all of these people that he talked to, their dream bodies, they would say, yes, Robert, I'm going to remember it. You know, don't worry about it. But this time, what he did was he said, well, I can't take any chances. I need verification. And he pinched her, right? He pinched the, the woman, went back and asked her, I think it was the next day or the day after, about the pinch. And then she swore up and down in her dream body she was going to remember speaking to Robert, but she didn't remember that because they never do. But she did remember being pinched and didn't know where it came from and even showed Robert where she got pinched at. Mm, that's brilliant. I like that. That's so good. what I want to ask you is, is I've had this experience kind of talking to my father where I thought that I, he was really understanding me, but I've had conversations with people that I that I would think that and I haven't I'm going to talk about this in my dream journals but that I was sure they would remember what we talked about and it's like they don't even know now is that in my mind I wonder or did that really happen in their mind in other words did it happen for them too or is it just in my mind look it's hard to know I think I think it kind of did on a level for them I think it's um an unconscious uh, kind of thing um, because I've all, yeah, I, I think that's what happens. I think when the, something like that goes on, you, you kind of know because the level of, of reality of the conversation, you know, very lucid conversation. I think that that invisible thing we call the relationship, once again, is the complex thing or, or the energy between people. So I think that you are talking, you know, to, to a higher aspect of them they might not have, have the memory of that. That they don't um, remember, they, right? Because we, we just don't. We right. don't remember most of it. No, I mean, because if everybody remembered everything astrally they were experiencing, um, you know, I think the whole, the, whole, the whole race of humanity would lift and we'd probably vibrate into a different dimension, you know, that there'd be none of the struggle, none of the suffering. So, yeah, I think that's what goes on. I mean, I do know that when I've, I've booed people early on, I used to... Um, uh, boo! Uh, surprise people, and uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, so I just shock people. And I noticed that uh, humans would would react like when they're walking down the street, they would couldn't see me, but there'd be a definite reaction from them, like a slight a stop in there, and I could see their energy field reacting, and I could also see them stop slightly and look around, and and um, whether or not they had a strange thought at that time, but it was a definite um, impulse. And so I could trigger impulses in people. And then I've also seen um, that when people sleep and often when they have nightmares, there's actual beings there who are impulsing them um, to have a nightmare. So, and once again, that can sound very how, weird. How many out-of-body experiences, Greg, do you think you've had? If you had to put a number on it, just a wild, educated Conscious guess. ones. Conscious ones. Right. Um, um, or hundreds. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm a statistic nut, okay? According to that, you're still in a special category. Um, it's only 7% uh, of people have had over 100, have reported having over 100. Do you think mm -hmm. that this is a problem or it's just that we just need to, like, this is the whole reason why you're doing the course, right? So we can increase that number. Yeah, absolutely. Look... As you say, you only need one experience to, to realize, whoa, you know, it changes your whole frequency. It literally changes the way you interact with this world. It just, people feel better. Um, I think um, it's, it's hard to know how much, like, how, how your field is compared to someone else's field, you know, how, what is, what is, what is actually going on. I mean, for me, it, it made more sense when I saw that, you know, a few lifetimes ago, and I didn't even believe in past lives, but when I was shown all this stuff and, uh, there was a bit strong ET connection in, in my case, and um, I kind of, because uh, I, I, to be honest, I, I've, I have seen always this planet as a bit odd. I mean, I know a lot of us have, but I've sort of haven't really got it. So, um, as in earthly 3D. So I think 
I think to me, I now I'm, you know, I think um, I, I don't know how someone could live uh, without doing not it. Have, yeah, I, I don't right. know so, how that, how you that, get by. I, that, I don't know how you get by. That's what I want to do is I want to learn it, it. All of these, you know, going to these other realms and planets and space and all of this fantastic stuff that we hear about. It's it's what I focus on. But these these numbers, I mean, that I, I'm a numbers freak, like I told you before, they they're telling me that everybody has these experiences, but they we are not uh, aware or at least haven't even begun to master how to lift off. And I think uh, if we had a world full of people that knew how to lift off and get this done, this whole planet would be different. But only 7% of people are like you, according to this study. The rest is just kind of here and there. You know, 1% or 36% of people only had one. Uh, uh, 41% of people only had two to five, 13, six to 19, 3%, 20 to 100 and then 7% of people have had over... So it's a small percentage of people that are having multiple experiences. And the average uh, age of a first out-of-body experience, is, which this explains a lot, a lot of shows that we've put together, the average age group is 4 to 12 years old. This is often a repeated experience that declines during the early teenage years. So I don't know if you remember this, Greg, but we, you and I had talked about this. All these crazy experiences I had when I was about 5 or 6... And a lot of kids have this, and now it's actually reported statistically. It makes that's me feel great. Better. It is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And if you think of it, you know what happened in your life to stop that from happening, and it's schooling, it's 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 education. We 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 learn. We go we, as little kids. As we're kind of um, tuned in, where we're just living, you know. And um, then then we learn problem solving. Uh, when we go to school, so that that preempts the problem. Uh, we're, we're preempting. We're putting the, you know, the, the car before the horse. So we're 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 taught that the world is a place to be solved. There are problems, and once we start doing that, our minds get wrapped up and entwined in the drama, and um, and that's why it gets lost often. But but people touch back and they remember when they were little kids and these things happen. I remember myself too seeing things and. You know, having bizarre experiences and lucid dreams when I was a kid, and and it's funny how that that can go away for a while, you know. Um, so I, I think that you know, like teenagers <laughs> these days, you know, they they're really anxious. And, and, uh, they're and not so thinking they're, about that. Like they're thinking about playing <laughs> Fortnite and, and girls and boys. And, yeah. So That's I can right. see and that number. Why it would stop at about twelve for sure. Yeah, and you get busy. I just remember going to school. I was a you know daydreamer, and then I remember just being told what to do all the time. Um, and every second was filled with activities. Well, and it was like, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's do this, Greg. I I told everybody we were going to talk about methods, and and you and I we could talk for hours, and we kind of just go off. But when we come back. I really do want to talk about some of these methods. Uh, there's so many. I'm not worried about giving your course away because you talk about so many methods. And I've only tried a couple, and I've already had one experience already. So, uh, yeah, we'll be right back with Greg Dool. Guys, you don't go anywhere after these words. Lighting the Void Radio. This is Reverend John M. Polk from johnpolkmedia.com, and you are listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. The Fringe FM has some of the best shows in paranormal, like Lighting the Void, The Paranormal Code, Into the Paranormal, The Secret Teachings, and so much more. Yeah, baby! We're live yeah. every night with hours of live original programming. Plus, we air some of the best shows in this genre, and we're not afraid to tell it like it is. I want the truth! Check us out at thefringe.fm. Follow The Fringe FM on Facebook and Twitter at The Fringe FM. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Lighting the Void is proud to announce Mind and Magic's Protection and Defense Course for protection from magical and psychic attacks. This is not a joke. Magic practitioners are on the rise, and with that comes attacks from baneful or black magicians that try to harm or hurt others for their own selfish reasons. If you are not a believer in psychic attacks, then this isn't for you. If you are, and you want the power to defend yourself and your family and home, then I highly suggest you grab Freighter Xavier's Protection and Defense course. In this course, you will learn how to tell if you are under attack from a natural source or if an individual is attacking you. The four forms of curses and attacks. How to remove self-imposed curses. The correct way to cleanse your home from negativity or malevolent entities. How to make your own holy water. What you should always keep near or under your bed. Herbs that banish negativity and promote purity. The most powerful banishing rituals on the planet. And for those that seem to want to harm you the most, how to put your enemies in a hell pit of their own making. You can also learn protection against shadow people and other entities. Or are you just in a bad planetary alignment? Even how to get rid of an enemy using a tic-tac box. It does not matter what your faith or belief is, this will work. Click the banner on the website at lightingthevoid.com or go to lightingthevoid.com forward slash Xavier. Hi folks. CBD is the home run hitter for health right now. Why you ask? Because of what it does for the body. Unfortunately, I can't tell you all about the benefit. You know, there's reasons. Do your due diligence and log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Ancient Life Oil uses organic ingredients and is blended in coconut oil for some of the best benefits. Legal in 50 states and non-psychoactive. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Select Joe Roop at checkout at ancientlifeoil.com. The truth is out there. There's something out here. And so are we. KTOK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM. You know, I really believe that uh, it's the, this consciousness movement, this, these talks about consciousness are bigger than the alien subject. Now, I hate to even say that because I'm wearing a shirt right now with an alien on it, but the more and more we do these shows, the more I think that uh, that's what it's all about now. This consciousness thing, astral travel, magic, it's what everybody's talking about. Uh, but that's what we're doing tonight. We're here with Greg Dole, and he's he's here with us talking about his new course that he's released. And, uh, you know, I promised that we were going to talk about some of these methods, and we just tend to, me, Greg and I, tend to ramble. And so... We're going to try to focus on that a little bit. But before we do that, I I do want to say, Greg, that there's we've got to talk about this fear thing because it's a huge subject with everybody. Fear, right? So I imagine as you tell us how to do a couple of these methods or what we need to do, fear is what stops us. It's the main thing, isn't it, of fear or expectations? Yeah, it is. It's, it's a, it, it is the main thing. Fear is the big one. And you even think that word alien. I mean, what what vibration does that have? Now, for me, it's a very different feeling now because I don't watch uh, movies that um, are negative about that because the fact is they do exist. There are beings. You can meet them. I've met them. They exist. So the, the whole fear thing, you know, uh, one of the great techniques I, I use in the course – you know, we're often taught simple things um, can't be so effective, but the simple things really are effective. Um, is to feeling in just for, like what is actually on your mind when you go to bed. Because, you know, when I go to bed at night, I want to be prepared. I want to be prepared so that if vibrations come, I'm out, I'm gone. So I want to be kind of, I want my mind to be as light as possible, as lucid as possible. Because even another definition of the word lucid is actually light. And when we often go to bed, you know, uh, that notion of the problem solving, the notion of the drama, you know, we go to work uh, where we're constantly confronted with dramas. You go to sleep at night. Now, what's happening is often when you go to bed, you, you'll, you're, you've often got certain things on your mind, positive or negative. They're things on your mind. So 
just by sh shining a, uh, a light of awareness on those things can help dissipate them. So when I go to bed, I want to be as empty as I can because it's about removing blockages for the astral experience. It's, it's not an add-on. It's not something extra to add on top of everything else you're learning. It's about getting rid of. So fear is the main thing to get rid of in all its in all its kind of guises. So fear can also show itself um, very subtly uh, worrying about things. Um, we talked before a little bit about being programmed by the mainstream. There's always showing the death, someone dying here or there. So we're, we're, we're often we're always reminded about this notion of, you know, oh maybe we'll we'll die if we leave our body. Um, and there's the fear of losing a job, fear of you know losing your stuff, yeah. fear of losing your loved ones. It's constant, constant loss. So huh. when I when I when I go to sleep, I think, okay, what's actually on my mind? And I just look at them. I just look at the things that are on my mind, put them into bubbles, and kind of let them go. And I find that I start to just feel good. I kind of feel empty, but good. I guess that's that's also, you know, the, the meditations I talk about during the day, these short, snappy meditations where you just kind of get centered and start so, to feel this notion of being. This is pre-liftoff. You're, get, you're letting everything go. You're just mm -hmm. getting clear, right? Yeah, getting clear is what it's about. So, and, you know, and using the day to get clear as well. Like, so looking at what, how did that make you feel, you know, a certain news item or what someone said and then if it didn't make you feel good in the nicest sense removing yourself from that like you know maybe stop looking at the newspaper or uh, you know stop looking at things that are making you tense up so so our actual physical bodies are programmed to to clench we're holding things in we're holding our identities in and as simplistic as it, as it sounds if we, we let, learn to let that go and you sort of a, a form of trust starts to emerge so you start your body starts to release um, a signature, a vibration of letting go and trust. Now, it's easy for me to say that because I know that when I go out of my body, I'm not going to die in, in terms of, you know, this mortal death. It's, I know that, I know that experience. I know what it feels like. Um, so for me, it's an incredible sense of, I'm carrying this sense of optimism all the time. I'm like a little kid, you know. There's a playground every night because Germany is going to happen at night. So I'm preparing for the playground. I All feel, day I'm preparing for the playground. But I feel like the family feud guy looking at these numbers. You're and you're you are you're talking about it. I wish I had that little buzzer that went ding, you know, the family I don't know if you've ever seen that show, Family <laughs> Feud. But death is the number four thing people are scared of. I'll just go one through yeah. four. Fear of the unknown is the biggest. Fear of the unknown isn't that fascinating? Fear of the unknown is the biggest. That's what I look forward to. Unable wow. to return to the body is number two. Number three is interaction with a non-physical being. That's my biggest one. Oh, God, I hate that. And death is number four. Wow, that's fascinating. Fear of the unknown. That's the is biggest one. Yep. That, that is fascinating. You know, it's funny. Um, um, fear of the unknown. Yeah, see, you know, I think that's also programmed in as well. If you think of it, this notion of the other. Uh, those that we don't know, whether it be, um, you know, a country or a, an ethos or, uh, you know, and, and you think of how, how Hollywood is obsessed with with um, the negative uh, alien concept. So it's, <laughs> it, it's a fascinating programming, isn't it? And uh, I think, you know, for me, I think, okay, what I'll do with it, I mean, I know it's safe, okay? I know it's okay to talk to beings who are non-earthly, a bit scary in the beginning, yeah, scary, yeah. And, um, you know, I got used to it. Now, uh, but I think, um, I forgot what I want to say, Joe. Well, are, you, are you building something or doing the dishes or what, what, what's going on there? You, you got some chores you got to do? It, it's 2 o'clock oh, over there, isn't it? I keep forgetting. Oh, there's probably sounds you can hear in the back. Yeah, this is, I think these things are like um, amplifiers or something. I think <laughs> yeah, just, they are. But I it's, it's okay. I was just, uh, I think you said you lost your train of thought. Maybe I thought maybe that's what was oh, happening. No. But look. I know. I know, I, know of, I was building it with some, uh, fear something of the there. Unknown. But, uh, that's the biggest one. And I, and I think that uh, those are the type of people, like, if I don't know who, it doesn't say if these people were randomly approached on the street, but I think that's how they did this survey. Hold on, let me check here. It says commonly reported phenomena associated with out of the body experiences based on 16. Okay, so even the, out of the 16,000 people that reported it, 
just being afraid of not knowing what's going to happen. That's why they didn't want to do it was the biggest one. Mm, it's interesting. I, I just think, you know, okay, this is what I'm building to. This notion of worst case scenario. Okay, if one if one restretches the envelope, the worst case scenario, and you confront that, worst case scenario is you die. Okay? Yeah. Now, and to, to think about that a bit, think, okay, is that really so bad? I guess it's funny because it, it harps back to what you said about that experience I had where I was shown my own death or I was shown myself dying in this body. Mm -hmm. So I think experiencing that, oh, yeah, um, wasn't so bad. <laughs> uh, I know it's, it sounds trivial to say that, but I think that if one toys around with worst case scenarios a little bit just to stretch the envelope of your mind and your perceptions and then 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 perhaps that fear of the unknown you know uh, it's funny this fear of, of other beings as well is a fascinating thing i yeah, guess that's one of them interaction with a non-physical being that's the one that freaks me out matter of fact why? i don't know greg but the other night when i was doing the chair thing i had the chair leaned back and i realized i was <clears throat> beside the chair okay and in the studio, I've got a lamp, so it's lit up towards the door. So imagine you're facing the door, and that part's lit up. But when you turn around, I've got a room back here, and it was pitch dark. And the first thing that hit my mind, and now this was in the dream or out-of-body experience or whatever, but the first thing that hit my mind is i got to get away from that because there's something in there, and I don't, I don't want to have any kind of interaction with it. So I just instantly moved away from it. Yeah, it is interesting. You know, you know what I do is um, that's where you can use dreams to program you. As I've said, in dreams, if I feel there's any antagonist in a dream, I'll allow them to approach me. And it's and as the tension builds, if they do come towards you, you'll find all of a sudden there's this release of tension. Now, it is an interesting thing. I think that is part of the programming. I think we're afraid that there are beings of greater powers than us that will somehow hurt us in some way. Um, even even if they just look weird, it scares me. <laughs> you know, I tell you what's really weird. The, the first time I saw um, I had this uh, like past life regression. Once again, it was my, my higher self, that, that voice again saying, I want to see me. You know, this time it was before the I want to see my death. And uh, then I saw myself like in a slideshow, and it was quite freaky because it was very, very real, you know. I can't and then get over I, that. It, what, did, I would not want to see that. Does anybody else listening, you, would you want, I mean, I guess I'm kind of curious about how I die, but that was that like an occurring thought to you? Oh, now I'm here. I really want to see this. No, not at all. I, I had no thoughts. Uh, I, I never wanted to see my death. I just remember being... <laughs> it was that voice saying that, you know. I know oh yeah, I know that's it's right. You told me that. My, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. But the other one was, well, I want to see me, and then I saw myself as I as I was at that stage, and then I like a slideshow. I got younger and younger, and then I I saw myself in these other bodies, and then then all of a sudden I saw myself um, as a as, as an alien, you know. And I remember freaking out. So it, it, it was a past life kind of regression. People have said when I've described it to people, and it was sort of um, the feeling of. Um, like, you know, the eyes are always in the same place, and it was the feeling of, yeah, that, that that's me. So I, I think to be face-to-face -face with myself as an alien, I remember I pulled out of it because I was so freaked out, and um, the, um, the I, I heard a voice as I pulled out and, and, and came into a normal waking state. The voice said, um, intermission. Like, there was a voice. Like, Whoa. there was a bit of humor going on, but it was definitely – me as an alien and it was like you know a really strange looking creature and i i was not into aliens at all you know i i don't entertain that uh, i just not into that and um that was a big eye opener and i, I guess little by little you know even i ha i'd have a lot of dreams that i would go lucid from them from the dreams i I'd go astral and um a lot of these dreams they would kind of they'd have aliens saying oh hi greg or talking to me and um that generally i think they were kind of wanting to introduce themselves to me in a, in, a, in a gentle kind of way, you know, just little by little. Well, let me, that was the thing I had. Let me tell you real quick, because I don't want to just keep sp spouting out numbers here, but I'll tell you if this is, happens to me. Fear of the unknown, I don't have a problem with that. Unable to return to the body, I'm not afraid of that. Uh, interaction with a non-physical being, 100% freaks me out. Death, 
not really possession, no fear of paralysis, kind of. Uh, experience an evil, definitely. Becoming lost, no. And that's all of them. That's the biggest reported one. So with me, it's all about running into creepy things and evil stuff. Because sometimes I can just feel it. And I don't know how to explain that. Oh, I know that totally. I remember the beginning, I used to have the same experience with that evil energy would move in. And uh, I think I've mentioned, I mentioned in, in the course through that experience, I had um, uh, talking about the scary stuff. That That's one thing. Actually, people look on my course, that is that you can preview that whole video about let's talk the scary stuff. And I talk about my interactions with evil until it kind of abated when I had this when the face of evil just turned into a beautiful face. And then she said, you see, Greg, it's all the same. There's, and I knew that there was no such thing. I realized it was an illusion. You know, um, it was like the, the, the face of light seen through our own shadows. So for me, it, was a, it wasn't it was initiation by fire. But I think knowing that, they're, they're going to be the areas you, you want to get into. So just to meditate upon um, meeting those things, like meditate upon meeting a creature who's not human. And just to think about that and to, because then you prepare yourself for it, to, to, to feel okay as that. I, you know, I, I remember, you know, I, I took, took our meditation in my 20s, you know, as, as we said, as you said earlier, for stage fright. But I remember early on when I'd really analyzed when I, when I go and I was studying music and I realized there's this particular bridge that I would go over that I get tense. And I'd go in my mind, I'd meditate going over this bridge and staying relaxed. And eventually I could get all the way into into the place I was studying the college, you know, physically in my mind without getting tense. And I found because I was associating music and performance with tension. And I found that I could kind of rehearse my trip in my mind energetically. So a lot of the astral um, meditations you do, and I kind of take people out in a relaxed way, feel good about themselves, and take them into places where I've been and where a lot of astral travelers do go. And, and meeting, you know, beings, meeting energies and, and um, feeling good about that. So you, you kind of, you're, you're short-circuiting the program that, that is mercilessly um, streamed at us in the 3D uh, to prevent us from experiencing this, you know? Well, okay. So, again, you and I, we're, we're, we're going through the fears. All right, so we've went through the fears. So when you, I guess, as a prerequisite, you would say, get clear. And another thing that you say in there is that, you know, laying down in your bed is probably not a good idea, which is something I do all the time and wonder why I don't ever have the experiences anymore. Well, I'm programmed to go to sleep in my bed. You know, uh, it's just, um, I don't know. I don't want to sit up when I do it, but uh, I finally had an experience sitting up, so... Uh, you can just give us one method, right? So that, that'll be cool. So let's do this. We clear our mind, right? And we get to a point, I'm sure that we do some type of breathing and you've got several of those exercises and I did actually find the one that worked for me. But at that point, what do we do? Do we just wait? <laughs> it's, it's a good question. I think you, you, you want your body and mind relaxed. You want to kind of, it's a little bit like priming an engine, isn't it? So we talked about the body, yeah, the, the way you lie down, it's good to have it not in a bed like a reclining chair or something like that. It's good. If you are in a bed, you want to be um, flat on your back. Um, is easier. And then you kind of do wait. I think I, I talk later on, of course, about meditating during the day just a few times so you're not too, too tired at night because generally as adults, we're, we're taught that's normal to be a bit wrung out. So... So you want to be, um, you do kind of wait. You kind of preempt the situation. Uh, you're there and you kind of, um, I talk about in the video, the chapter, the, the lesson on sleep fishing. I talk about uh, watching your mind start to fall asleep and pulling it back a few times. So there's a few techniques that there there are to, to keep your mind from sort of uh, falling into, into this, into the hypnosis. So, um, there's a few techniques you can do to kind of stay awake. So once you're primed, you kind of stay awake for quite a while. Now, often you won't go straight into an astral state, but what it does is it will prime you to go astral before dawn. Generally, that's when the fireworks happen. So before dawn, you've done these exercises, perhaps during the day as well, 
at night when you've gone to bed, uh, or you can be just sitting in a chair doing this, and then all of a sudden you, you get out of body. So it's it's a question of priming it, constantly priming your body to, to feel good, to feel ready to go. A uh, few, few meditations like I take you through in the course to, so you get your touch kind of, the, the astral feeling, if you like, to to remind you of what it is, because you are going, people are going out of body, so it's kind of, it's almost like saying the astral body, it's okay, I can take this, I can take this going out of body, I can take this meeting other beings, I know I'm going to be okay, so it's almost like allowing your subconscious to, to, to this grip it has over you, so that you can go into a, a higher reality state, so, um, and then you kind of wait, you know, you just wait, you wait for these sounds, you wait for vibrations, um, it's a good way of putting it, John. Yeah. I don't, some people say that it's, a. Uh, I'm so analytical. So this is what frustrates me the most. I'm always looking for a systematic approach to do everything. So I know how to do it. I have this thing in me that wants to do that, but everybody reports this stuff is different with me. It feels like I'm having, um, like when I go into this, the vibration mode, it feels like I'm humming. Like I'll start humming in my leg and then it'll be my arm and then I'll feel my, my body get real heavy. Right. And then I'm like, okay, that's a good sign. So I feel this heaviness and this humming. Well, other people feel like it's electricity or they hear these great sounds, these Russian sounds. And it just makes me wonder why everybody's, you know, experiencing it in different ways. It is weird. It is a, it is a weird thing. That's why I kind of, um, it's good to look at it from all angles. Like some people are more visual. Some people, you know, they're the, the, the hearing or they're the, it's a um, they're kind of the vibrate, the feeling, the sensing, the vibrations. Um, it is bizarre. And and I found for me, like as I said, it started with lights, and then vibrations, and it, it changes over time. Um, I'm constantly kind of exploring, you know, like like tentacles and octopus, const, constantly feeling out for maybe there's something else, another way of of touching this. And I think everyone is different. More and more, I realize I, I don't. No one can know how someone else really feels in their body, in their in their skin, in their field. No one knows how they relate to the world, um, how yeah, their right. fears relate to their fears. No one knows that. So, you know. Uh, so I, I would love to find that one magic button. I guess I'm looking for that magic button myself to, to help people because I feel that's, you know, a lot of people say, oh, thanks, Greg, you came and took me out of body last night. And I, said, and I go, oh, I don't remember doing that. And I realize, <laughs> you know, there's stuff going on, you know, like I know that uh, most most my astral bodies, as most of us, are doing stuff that we, we, we don't remember. So, there's, you know, that's when we rejuvenate. That's when we touch base with where we come from. That's where we get our energy. That's why we, that's why we sleep, you know. When we sleep, it's not just about becoming unconscious there's stuff going on we're being recharged you know like a like a phone um so no one really knows and but but we're all in the quest of the same as you i'm, I'm in the quest for the one technique what i find is though a certain technique works for me and then it changes then it changes then there's another technique i'm looking for so it's a little bit like going up a stairway or or going around a track the view changes you know the, the angle of the track changes the you know, it's it's always slightly different. I think to I think what I'm trying to do in the course too is approach it from all different angles. Yeah, that's I what I was going to say that in that course that you cover so many different methods and ways that it, it's bound to happen. I like how you did it because you did it in that way. Not here's just the way to do it. Here's the fundamentals, and here's this so many different methods and some focus stuff that you do. That if you just do it and practice it enough, it's bound to happen. So I would say that anybody that actually wants to have an out-of-body experience, getting Greg's course is probably a good idea if you want to do that. But you got to do it. And that's my problem, too. Sometimes I don't stick with it. It's not just going to happen overnight. Well, it could, I guess. Exactly, though. I mean, you're right. It could. So you've got to entertain the notion that it can always happen. But I think... Um you kind of want to stick with it, you know. I mean, you know, as I mentioned, of course, you know, I, I, as a kid, I, I had terrible trouble sleeping. I, I used to ask my friends, how do you fall asleep? I had no idea how to fall asleep. I'd lie there for hours. I remember that. I, I thought, why has no one told me how to fall asleep? So I was obviously kind of primed a little bit to be watching my consciousness in that way. So I never knew, um, you know, how to do it. 
So I think I think that looking at it from all different angles, it's the only, it's the only way to do it. And I think to stick at it, have a certain will and intention to carry that in, in a kind of a playful way, like uh, not not get too bogged down. Because I know if I'm say I'm wanting to experience certain things and and it doesn't happen. But then what will happen is I'll experience something else. And I think, wow, that's better than the thing I want to experience anyway. So I've found to be kind of neutral, like not to expect too much, if you like, um, or not to expect the thing that you want to experience. So it's it's, it's like having an optimism, knowing there's something greater. And I, and I talk in the course about having an intention, like a target, like it could be someone you want to visit or an experience or some place you want to go if you that can often get you over the line and also i talk about in the course um practicing going to a safe place a place where you feel comfortable like so just to imagine getting out of your body and going into your lounge room or your kitchen and just to go into places that don't freak you out and if you ask it why you're scared there is it because the lights off well in the astral you can have the lights on you know you can just say lights on if you want so you you um you learn to venture out a little bit you know it's like that like um like a you know like a, a kitten learning to 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 explore its backyard for a bit and um as beings we're just taught not to get out of this yard of the 3d so it's natural that we'd be afraid of the unknown but like like just a couple of weeks ago i went camping and i was um it was wild camping along this beach and um i just wanted to connect with intelligences you know higher intelligences and and then i felt these lights flashing and this just a couple of weeks ago was a fantastic and i knew something's going on and meanwhile there's a mate of mine out there and he was running around going gee and he's taking photos of these orbs you know these there was a, of light. A, a what out there what did you call it like like orbs o-r-b-s like a, okay. a ball of i thought light. you said mega mind or something no this mate of mine sorry this friend of mine we say friend of mine so sorry yeah yeah no, you australians guy, you talk too fast i'm sorry no, I'm just, I'm just playing with you, man. We do, we do. You Brisbaneans. Uh, no. Because the water goes around the wrong way down the sink. That's what, <laughs> so I haven't, seen, haven't you seen the Simpsons? Anyway, um, so what, what, what happened was, um, and then also the, the electrics of his car got damaged. Now, what I found is, it is true what people have seen about this notion of when you know UFOs come and they sometimes take energy. Now, I was connecting with intelligences. Though I was wanting to connect to higher intelligence, like, you know, a higher vibration. So I felt good in my heart. Uh. And I'm lying there. And the whole night I'm saying I want to connect to this intelligence. And then I started to see flashes of light. And I'm half asleep, half awake. But I know this is, I know this is something external. And it happened about four, four times, four different occasions. And what happens is because they're wanting to come quasi-physical, they were showing themselves as balls of light in the physical. And, but because they were doing that, they were using energy um, and I thought this is interesting. I could go astral and meet them, but I want them to come into the physical. And then the they kind of did come into the physical. And then, well, you could kind of see glimpses of these balls of light in the physical. And the funny thing was, the next day, the car that we got in there, its whole electrics had been had gone. So they they were using any uh, power resource to become quasi physical. And that's related to why in the astral we feel vibrations is that there's an energy um, kind of contact that goes on so when they come down here the, the vibratory state is a higher state and our bodies start to resonate in like resonance if you like you know that this is what's happening they, they're kind of not using but they're sinking into our electrical bodies uh, which is also you know as you say call it what you want astral energy body call it what you want right um, it's all related so that to my mind, I'm, I'm, I've always been interested in the mechanics. Like, even the beginning when I was getting out of body, I thought, okay, yeah, I'm seeing some weird planet, weird aliens, whatever, blah, 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 seeing bizarre things. But I was interested in the mechanics of it, like um, the, how it relates to our physical bodies and, and what, what is our physical body and what is our energy body. And so that by, by, by honing in on that and by thinking about that, the actual content – secondary and that way it doesn't freak you out so much i know this sounds weird so that way you're programming yourself then if there is someone who doesn't look particularly human talking to you or interacting with you rather than freaking out about how they look you're more interested in in the state of reality you are in or so you by, are by, i would still freak out sorry 
<laughs> yeah. I love it. You, I love it. Joe. I you've love got it. a curiosity about this that, that I, if I don't run into beings, I'll be fine. I mean, I would have to run into something very uh, playful and friendly, looking for me to be okay. And that's just that's just not <laughs> what happens half the time. We we do got to take a break, though, guys. We'll be right back. We're here with Greg Doyle. We're halfway through this thing, so you guys, we're talking astral travel. We're talking techniques about how to get out of the body. And then uh, I guess uh, we can talk a little bit more about some of Greg's experiences. We'll be right back. I'm Joe Roop. This is Lighting the Void. From birth, we have been conditioned to conform to what is normal, conditioned to adhere to authority, and conditioned to repeat what has been told to us as truth. I'm Ryan Gable, and here at The Secret Teachings Radio, I've interviewed hundreds of great guests and done extensive unique research into subjects that span from the paranormal and the occult to health, philosophy, and history. I personally have no affiliations or agenda, except to use objective critical thinking in my analysis of every subject discussed to empower myself with information and hopefully allow you to do the same. If you want to join me, tune into the Secret Teachings radio broadcast airing live Monday through Friday from midnight to 3 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time on the Fringe FM. For more information, you can visit our website at www.thesecretteachings.info or email me at rdgable at yahoo.com. Occult Arcana is a balanced and objective guide to those subjects considered a part of the nature of light and darkness. Addressed in this text is a compilation of material that will provide new perspectives and awaken latent abilities that we all possess. The content herein shall provide magical sustenance for adept and novice alike, and will help strengthen the cornerstone of mystic understanding and alchemical transmutation. If you are interested in this modern grimoire, you can find detailed information and ways to order by visiting www.thesecretteachings.info. Although esoteric and occult studies remain vast, they are rooted within a universal philosophy that is difficult, if not impossible by finite terms, to explain in words. Language places restriction and erects barriers to understandings. By this it is to be understood that there are some things man should consider far too sacred to profane with definition. For these concepts and the manner by which we live our lives, we shall take a note from the Greek philosopher Pythagoras, quote, silence is better than unmeaning words, end quote. To get your autographed copy of Occult Arcana today, simply visit www.thesecretteachings.info or email the Secret Teachings at rdgable at yahoo.com. Who were the real ancient Egyptians? What is it about ancient Egypt that captivates us all? The critically acclaimed series Magical Egypt is back with all new episodes. Let Chance Gardner and company take you on another adventure through Magical Egypt in the new series Magical Egypt 2. Magical Egypt 2 attempts a forensic reconstruction of the science of the ancients through a study of ancient aesthetics. Also, the best researchers and authors in the field like John Anthony West, Graham Hancock, Laird Scranton, Robert Duvall, Lon Mao Duquette, Aaron Cheek, and more join together to explore the topics of the esoteric and the hidden messages of the ancient Egyptians. Just go to MagicalEgypt.com right now and put in the code word FRINGE and get 10% off any download or order including the groundbreaking original Magical Egypt series as well as the new episodes in Magical Egypt 2. Also check out the great work and the companion series at MagicalEgypt.com. Click the banner on the Fringe FM or go to MagicalEgypt.com and use the code word FRINGE and get 10% off your order today while it lasts. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. 
ever seen an extraterrestrial? It can be hard to believe they exist unless you've seen one for yourself. What if I told you I've seen them my whole life but have never had a witness who shared the encounter with me? Now, what if I told you I saw four of them, two with blue skin, and there are over 20 witnesses to this CE5 event? My new book, The Blue Beings, Visitation at the UFO Conference, documents actual accounts from real witnesses, many of which have gone on record to attest to this otherworldly reality. Be a part of the quantum paradigm shift that is taking place right now. Go to johnpolkmedia.com to get your copy of The Blue Beings, Visitation at the UFO Conference, on sale right now at johnpolkmedia.com. That's J-O-H-N-P-O-L-K media.com. So you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. This is Mary Ellen Poppick of the Sanctuary for Mind, Body, and Spirit. Listen on the Fringe FM every Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern, where we talk all things mind, body, and spirit. You'll learn things from the esoteric to modern-day health, as well as hear from incredible special guests. There will be something for everyone each week, so don't miss it. That's every Monday night, 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern, live right here on the Fringe FM. See you there. How you doing today, guys? This is Garrett Lee. And this is Randy Warner. We're the hosts of Healers and Hellraisers, and you're listening to The Fringe FM. Follow The Fringe FM on Facebook and Twitter at The Fringe FM. That's, uh, I guess that didn't duck properly, but yeah, it's one 800 The phone lines are open if you want to call in and ask Greg any questions. I know I've missed a few in the chat room. Uh, we are live on the Fringe FM. This is Lighting the Void. I'm your host, Joe Root. Remember, after the show tonight, Ryan Gable's going to be on with the Secret Teachings, another live show, taking you on into the late night hours, into the early morning. Every night, we've got cool stuff here on the Fringe FM. And uh, we're here with Greg Doyle. I wanted to read a quick email, so when I get these emails, i got to read them. Okay, just real quick. Hey, Joe, I'm an American staying in Scotland right now, and I discovered your show just a couple of months ago. I have to say I absolutely love, and they capitalize love here, which I love, what you're doing. As someone who started listening to Art Bell way back in the early 90s, I'd have to say your show is the best thing since those early days of Coast to Coast. I love especially your shows about magic and the esoteric, and then they give me a guest suggestion. They want me to have Thomas Sheridan on here, so I will contact them. Thank you very much. I think he would make an amazing guest for your show, and he's all over it, all over YouTube, etc. Keep up the amazing work, and I'll make a donation as soon as I am able. Thank you, Nick. I really appreciate that. Um, when I get those emails, it means the world to me. It's a good ego booster, although I would never compare myself to Art Bell. That's like, you know, comparing yourself to Michael Jordan or something. It really, you can't. But I, I, I appreciate the feedback. I really do. And uh, speaking of feedback, make sure you guys go leave a review on any of the podcast reviews. Uh, if you can, on iTunes, that would really help out and help us move up. Greg... I was telling you during the break, and I want to tell everybody what you think. What do you think about this? Because we were talking about dream activations to get into the astral realm. And I had something happen just last night and that is very hard to explain. So I'm going to try to explain it this way. I had a dream that I only reckon I had a dream about. I was in some soccer fields and there was a school. I keep having dreams about schools, by the way. And I, um, was I couldn't find somebody, but I know that the school was here, and I don't even know what kind of school it was, but I know I went into the school, 
and I saw this big rocket ship. And this was just this morning when I woke up, I remembered this. But this rocket ship, it made me remember flying in this rocket ship going to Mars. And my father was there, and I said, hey, I remember riding in this thing once. Do you remember that, Dad? And he said, yeah, I remember that. I remember you thought that you weren't going to come back. You wasn't going to come back to Earth. Well, the funny thing is, when I woke up, I really still felt like that that had happened to me and then realized that that happened to me in another dream. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Like, I was having dreams about other dreams that I had. Mm, yeah, yeah, it does make sense. Look, I can really relate to that. I think, And I think a lot of people will relate to that. I think that... um. I think that we have all these dream selves um, and often they're living lifetimes within these dreams. So I think in many ways, a dream self or, or dream is a vibration in itself. It's, it's a lifetime in itself. What I've found is, um, and, and as you say, you have these memories that are quite detailed within, within that, within those dreamscapes. And you realize, hang on, I've had all these other dreams that relate to that. I myself too have had many dreams um, where, um, this is interesting because we were talking about not getting scared before about aliens, but we've, <laughs> we've had dreams when everyone's running around um, escaping from um, these ships that are overhead. Like, so I look up in the dream. Generally, this is interesting. I look up in the dream and I become lucid. And I think, okay. I'm looking up at stars and I see ships coming. And I notice that everyone's Where running. Where in the hell cover. are you? It sounds like you're in Ramar the jungle. What the hell's going on out there? Do you have a weapon on your side? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. They, they're going crazy tonight. Australia is a uh, wild place. You got some crazy animals. Out. Isn't Australia <laughs> the most dangerous place to live as far as like animals and go? You sound like you're in a jungle. Well, it is. There is. It's funny because we're. I'm, I'm ten minutes from the CBD um, in Brisbane, but I'm, I'm on a creek and there's, uh, there's there's always animals around, snakes and things. But it's quite safe. You kind of let go, you know. Yeah, you I can't apologize. Let go, and if something bites you, it bites you. It, it's just they were getting, <laughs> and the more you tried to tell the story, the louder they got. But we were talking about yeah, yeah. being in a dream and remembering an, another dream while you're in that dream. But it's so yeah. real. You know? It is fascinating. I think it's levels of our consciousness. and um, But I think in the same way, um, Joe, I think that this reality is also a dream in itself in that it's it's not as real as when you're in the astral states. So we have like dreams within dreams within dreams within dreams within dreams. Like looking in a hall of mirrors. Where where are you actually standing when you look in a hall of mirrors? You know, where are you? <laughs> so I think that I think that in those kind of dreams they become more and more lucid. Like as you get as you start to get more and more lucid and, and experimenting with this stuff and wanting to know more about what you are, these sort of dreams you, you notice them more. Like see in that dream you realized, oh, I've had this dream before. I have memories in this dream. It f- feels like it was real. And right. so that's what starts to happen. And that's all part of the, you know, thinking of that notion of lucidity meaning light, you know, shining light into these dark places or places that we don't know what they are. Um, and and I think that's what it's all about. See, even think of that word dark is, 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 is uh, fed in from the mainstream as a negative thing, but it's not. It just means that we... We don't know what's there, and we, we're taught to fear what we don't know what is there. But um, you know, uh, as as this show is called, you know, lighting lighting the void. I mean, many astral experiences, you will go into a place called the void where it's pitch black. And I remember in the beginning when I first went there, I, I really freaked out. It's like a waiting room in the astral often, not always, but sometimes you go into this place where you're just in absolute blackness. That's terrifying. And then, well, well, not really. That was where you hear the Om, you know, that, that the Buddhist Om. You hear the Om there and really low grinding Om. And also, that's where everything emerges from. The jungle's really going Are you okay? Do you need to flee the scene? <laughs> no, I don't. I feel like I'm talking to a reporter that's about to get attacked. You know, you see those reels on YouTube, you know? <laughs> we do have both. Actually, funny enough, Joe, you know, talking about death, when I was a little kid, I was actually bitten by a tiger snake. So I was actually killed by a snake when I was See, 10 years old. Lily is telling me, no, Australia is not the most dangerous place. <laughs> no, we got bears. Well, and Australia is no, dangerous. Well, I stepped on it. I stepped on a snake that is very that is very poisonous snake. So it, it, funny enough, I think that 
I remember my mum said I was never the same after. And I remember I, like for 12 hours, because it took me a while to get to hospital, so I was unconscious. But I remember it being a very beautiful feeling. I can't remember what happened. But when I came, when I came to, you know, uh, hours later uh, in hospital, I remember thinking, I feel really good. And um, I think in many ways, that was also, you know, like experiencing a, a death kind of thing, if you like. So I think um, perhaps, um, yeah, that that's also part of um, part of people say, why do you have all these experiences? I don't know, but I mean, maybe maybe uh, the the tiger snake bite could have had something to do with it too. Who knows? But I think, yeah, not the, losing the fear of death is is huge, and um, yeah. But uh, the dream, the dream thing is interesting, uh, Joe. I, I think that you do these any any kind of exercises you do uh, any of these kind of astral exercises that we do help you become more lucid in dreams. And, and being lucid in a dream can be either being very conscious that you're dreaming, and then you start to have memories within the dream, like you had yourself. And I think that's that's all a sign of you know waking up. Hmm. Well, I'm just um, – apparently some people are having problems with Twitter here, but uh, there's some questions coming in. Uh, one of the questions is, is does Greg uh, – and this one's actually in Spreaker. Does Greg meet with his students out of body? Can he remember? I remember passing out with my pal, and this is from Genevieve, and met them out of body. I guess or Genevieve met her pal out of body on a cloud, and we both recalled this experience later. Have you experienced that? And if you have, has it been with any of your students that you teach? Yeah, what what has happened is I've taken them, I've taken them out of body, and they remember that. I on more occasions than not, though, I've taken them out of body, and I don't remember it, but they do. And then other times, we both remember it. <laughs> but also, you know, it sounds weird. Often I'll I'll put out a request um, that someone be taken out of body, and then I feel it goes through a network. And then they have an out of body experience. And even though I, I didn't actually. Um, oh, I think one of the birds got you. you are you there? I'm there. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I lost you there for can a minute. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm under siege, Joe. I'm under siege. Look, it, <laughs> because I'm dealing in, w- with this astral stuff all the time, generally I'm. Um, are wanting to use the experiences uh, to for for some particular thing, but I, I find that yes, people sometimes I've remembered experience of taking people out of body, and they've remembered that as well, or I've or I've met them in the astral. More times than not, they don't remember it, but also um, I've taken a lot of other people out who I don't know, who aren't my students. So. Um, in terms of just, I've had a couple of experiences where I've met people and, and been able to validate, but that tends to go on early on in the experiences because early on, it seems to be the process of validation seems to be early on. Then later on, you kind of let that go and you just kind of want things to happen. But validation, um, I don't generally just sort of play around out there anymore. I've generally <laughs> got, got tasks. Uh, I'm generally very um, goal-oriented now when I'm out. Oh, okay, another question. Uh, you guys, if uh, by the way, I'm giving away uh, Wayne McCroy Jr.'s book for any the first caller that calls in. That's the uh, the book. He it's signed and inscribed too. He sent me a few to give to you guys. So there you go. But there's a question here from uh, Sam: Is can Greg identify the stage for me? Maybe I don't know. But every night as a child, when I went to bed, I would close my eyes. Then my brain would go through this. I was a speck on earth. Then I was a giant, and the earth behind me was a speck. And then pop, I would be out of my body. Well, that's wild. I've never heard that that's before. It. That's crazy. It's wild. Um, I do know often when you, when you uh, first get out of body, you see the earth. You see it suspended there. It seems to be part of um, what well, like we've shown the earth maybe to prove to ourselves that, that we're they're away from the earth so um so it's like the blasting off kind of thing but the speck thing's interesting i've been a speck where i've just kind of been like a speck of dust and just sort of floated into the corner of the room and i haven't in the beginning especially i just didn't didn't know what was going on but that that's an unusual experience i think i think um many people ex- experience it in different ways but being shown the earth is is very consistent with a lot of astral traveling 
Okay. All right. Well, I don't. I, I feel like you, uh, you. You. You've probably. You're a wiry type fellow. How do you? No, no offense or nothing, but I can tell you're just full of energy, right? How, how do you relax that way? How do you just get into you know that state? Is it the breathing exercises? Hmm. That's a. It's a good one. Look, I. I, I okay. I think for starters, I don't. Um, I don't see this reality as real. I, 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 I feel that um, it's a game of energy, so it doesn't have the same um, pull on me. Um, that's as a, as a base. Like I feel that um, we exist in these high realities. So first of all, I don't get as tense as I did because I don't see this reality as particularly real. The other thing is um, I um, also a few years ago, I think I mentioned the last time, I, I chatted to you. I had this weird experience when I was meditating. I had this little tweak at the back of my brain at the left there. So I did feel a lot of uh, names of things, and uh, and um, a narrator at the back of my mind kind of stopped. I think going out of body a lot kind of killed the narrator or the the voice in my head, if you like. That is a commentator. I think so, I'm losing I, you again, Greg. Or how far away are you from your router? Not too far. I want to go a little bit closer, though. I just I just left left the house here because of the the, the But I'm going a little bit closer here, Joe. Is that better? No. And uh, it can get better. It's the jungle. <laughs> it's the jungle. Okay. Can you, uh, can you hear me now? Is that better? What I would do is turn that camera off because we really don't need it. To be honest with you, you know how to do that. Okay. How do I? There's a little camera um, button there. You can turn it off. There's the damn camera button. Oh, it looks I'll like a camera. Down. It's a little thing that looks like a camera. <laughs> you can't see it. <laughs> you can't see it. No, I don't think. Well, oh, I sorry, I've turned it off. You're right, of course. Because, there because you go. I have my camera. Well, I always have it covered, so uh, then I never notice I have to turn it off because it's always covered. Um, can you hear me, Joe? Yeah, I can hear you. It just It's a really bad connection for some reason. I don't know why. I'm going out here, but you may hear music. It's kind of an issue. I'll, I'll, um, I'll go. Maybe it's better now if I, if I keep still. Well, you know, these things happen in live radio, especially, I think, I don't know, man, the, are those birds on your wires out there? They could just be no, hopping up uh, and down on your wires. Can you hear me now better? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, what was I'm so sorry. About? I just when I, when when you break up and I can't hear you, I've got to stop oh, everything because I, I would there's no communication at that point. Yeah, I, and I can hear you perfect. It's funny, isn't it? I've got. Yeah. Is that okay now, Joe? Yeah, that's fine. That's that's fine. Well, what was I talking about? I have no idea. <laughs> oh I no, okay, no, 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 no. I was talking about the narrator and killing the narrator in the head. Oh yeah, in terms of being relaxed, um, I do uh, find that. Um, uh, just yeah, kind of f sensing into the body, kind of at all times, and feeling if you're holding it and just l letting it go. Also, I know when I'm in the red. Like if I'm if I'm working a bit and I feel I'm in the red, I, I find I've got to do things to get back in the black. If you know what I mean, I've got to do I've got to um, do nothing uh, or, or or relax a bit. So I find. Um, yeah, yeah, and also I talk about in the course that breathing, ch breathing through your chakras really helps. Breathing through the chakras really does help. They are real, so th there are real things you can do to actually um, become more present and and kind of you know let let go of um, memories and things. So I think for me it's been forced upon me because of my experiences and and that tweak I mentioned in the brain before when my memory all of a sudden became very very bad. So I find that keeps me present as well. Well, you know what helped me in the course where you were talking about becoming one with everything around you like and and only and i don't know if i'm explaining it right but where you're talking about becoming all mind with everything um you were talking about it yeah. earlier god it's so hard to explain but it's almost like that right before you're about to fall asleep that state where you don't feel like you're in your body anymore and you kind of feel like you're with everything else and that's so such a delicate spot because if you're not paying attention if you don't stay aware at that you can either just go completely unconscious or you can actually have something cool happen you know yeah yeah that, that that's so true i think that 
it's kind of stretching that awareness of that spot, you know, stretching that awareness into your everyday kind of feelings and awareness so that you kind of do become kind of connected at the same time invisible. Like, you know, it, it sounds a little um, kind of cliche, but almost you start to feel invisible. Like, like, um, like really we are, and this is getting us terry, but really we are the, the cosmos experiencing itself through us, you know? And so, after a while, I, I feel I'm not here. I feel very light, if you if you know what I mean. Um, and at the same time, I'm everywhere around me. So it's kind of an invisibility. And I think that comes about through losing, you know, those fears of barriers or the fears of – because you can only really have these fears if you're feeling separate from, you know. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's probably a, a knock-on effect of – of um, getting out of body a lot and and, um, and and meditating for relaxation, I just think you know to have fun with it as well is is vital. I think um, not to get too um, caught up in it and serious about the whole thing. And and little glimpses start to happen. Like it, it might not happen the way you think it's going to happen, but like people when they do this course and do do astral exercises generally, things can happen in the strangest and bizarrest of ways. And um, so you 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 learn to expect the unexpected, you know. Like I, I'm 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 now expecting anything to happen at any time. <laughs> at well, there's any really time. no common ground here. That's the problem that I can't find either. Is is common ground? So when I see someone that does a, you know, a course on astral travel or journeying out of the body, and I've taken about four or five different courses, and yours is, yours is pretty good. William Buellman's is pretty good too. Uh, it's almost like that you've done it enough that you can cover these types of fundamentals that most people can't really explain because you understand it on a different level, you know. And and even yeah, in your yeah. course, I've caught you kind of talking, uh, trying to reaffirmate things in the course to keep keep you focused, which is something that you know we don't really realize that's happening that we're that we just our brain is going all over the place all the time and we just lose focus. We think we're focused, but we're really not. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And this is what I really noticed. Like in the astral, the um, the the mind is so is so it's like a it's like the it's like a needle. It's just like a pinprick of awareness. It's so so focused, and that's why when you're in the astral, you want to experience something. It happens. Um, whereas in this realm, I realize it's all over the place. Um, we really are. Uh, like as we're like a windscreen wiper going back and forth over the window of a car it, it's it's for, for always moving but we shouldn't blame ourselves because we, it is a linear we are in a linear um, reality so time is literally constant move, constantly moving so when you go out of body you're in a non-linear reality and and um, you really know that and you're in a you're in a place of of absolute awareness and this is like you know I talk about connecting to everything and, and being kind of the I am if you like of and so that when you're in the astral, it, it, it takes no effort to be that. So really all of these meditations are just reminding you of that place of absolute focus. You know, um, well, um, it, it is a fascinating phenomenon. And more and more, I think I'm constantly trying to, you know, put into words or, or put, a, put a finger on exactly what is it right. that that is that space. I guess that's what I'm about, you know, and that's why... I put this course together, but it's interesting, as you say, like I haven't done um, astral courses, so I'm interested in what you're saying about how other ones are kind of different as well. Like, um, um, well, I can yeah, give you some I'm feedback like, on that, uh, but yeah. you're doing the kind of the same thing William Buellman does on it with his course as well. But we got to take a break, we'll be right back, guys. We're here sure. with Greg Dole reporting from Vietnam during the middle of a war, and uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing, brother. We'll be right back. I'm Joe Roop. This is Lighting the Void. You guys don't go anywhere. This is the last part of the show. Stick around. Paranormal Radio hasn't changed much in the last 20 years. It's the same boring, 
safe and easy radio. The guest comes on, the host asks questions, the guest answers, and the show, right? Not with the paranormal code. You actually get entertainment. You actually get information told to you the way it should be told. Very truthful, very direct. I'm your host, Rich Giordano of the Paranormal Code. You can listen to me Monday through Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific on the Fringe FM. I hope to see you there. Hey, folks. Guess what the number one phrase that Life Change Tea receives by email? You ready? We love this tea. We love this tea. Time after time, week after week, we love this tea. Life Change Tea gives you more energy, a beautiful cleansing, and fulfills its slogan perfectly, the tea that makes you go. So if you want to be on your health game, log on to getthetea.com and order Life Change Super Strength Tea. Packages come in a one-month supply, and when you brew this stuff, wait until you see the results. Aren't we all about the results? And with a lot of people's health struggling, we can use a little bit of help. Doctors will tell you, disease starts in the gut. So, log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Be our next email saying, I love this tea. I mean, I love this tea. Get the tea at getthetea.com. Helping America one tea bag at a time. Reclaim your active lifestyle with Angioprim. Angioprim is the original liquid oral chelation supplement. Chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in your veins and arteries that can cause blockages. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in Angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. Find out more. Go to angioprim.com. Talk to a trained consultant by calling Angioprim toll-free, 877-882-7221. From birth, we have been conditioned to conform to what is normal, conditioned to adhere to authority, and conditioned to repeat what has been told to us as truth. I'm Ryan Gable, and here at The Secret Teachings Radio, I've interviewed hundreds of great guests and done extensive unique research into subjects that span from the paranormal and the occult to health, philosophy, and history. I personally have no affiliations or agenda, except to use objective critical thinking in my analysis of every subject discussed to empower myself with information, and hopefully allow you to do the same. If you want to join me, tune into The Secret Teachings radio broadcast, airing live Monday through Friday from midnight to 3 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time on The Fringe FM. For more information, you can visit our website at www.thesecretteachings.info or email me at rdgable at yahoo.com. If you have hard water, the lime scale not only leaves white spots, it clogs pipes and breaks down appliances, costing you hundreds of dollars in energy and wear. Eliminate lime scale and other water issues like brown staining and bad odors with HydroCare water products available from Wave Home Solutions. Wave's affordable water systems don't use salts or chemicals. You'll love the way your water tastes, smells, and looks. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. The truth is out there. There's something out here. And so are we. KTOK Digital Broadcasting, The Fringe FM. All right, we're in the final hour here on Lighting the Void. We are talking astral travel with Greg Doyle. Uh, Don't forget, tomorrow night we're doing the New Moon Show with Mary Decina. That's going to be a good show. The call-in number is 1-800-588-0335. I'll probably wait uh, for tomorrow's show to give away Wayne's book. It's real nice. He sent me a few copies of it to give away to you guys, so that was nice of him. And speaking of books and courses and stuff, Greg has got his brand new astral travel course. I highly recommend you get it. And I think he's given it, he's even given a uh, a coupon away, right? For you guys, what you can go ahead and talk about that. I don't want to speak for you, Greg. Yeah, yeah. So I've got a coupon. If you if you go to the um, course, do you have the link for the course uh, at all, Joe? Um, do I have the uh, link for it? Are you seriously yeah. asking me that, Greg? You're you're something else, no, no. brother. No, no. 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 No, I got it somewhere. <laughs> you I'm, do, don't you? I know it's um, – what is the link for the course? Well, there, if you go – well, It's Greg's first time. Can find it. No, 
<laughs> it's on it's on the front page of my website, which is greekdoyleastral.com. Gotcha. They'll see it there at the front. And um, there's a coupon that your listeners can put in, OBE, uh, in capital letters, and that'll that'll get $50 off the price of the course for the next um, 24 hours, the next day. So, um, yeah, and there's also an affiliate program within the course that if people, you know, want to share this stuff around, um, they can make 25%. There you from, go. Um, from links. So That's it's, pretty it's cool. A, uh, so you guys win-win. get a fifty dollar off coupon, and not only that, you can become an affiliate of his program and promote it for him, and make a little bit and help him out and share the wealth and share the knowledge. Because if we can get, see, here's what I want to do, Greg, and this is something that I want to be the first radio host to get a bunch of people that can figure out how to astral travel, and then we all just go meet up somewhere, and then I'm going to be the first radio host to do a show in the astral realm. Huh? What do you think about that? I love it. I love it, Joe. That that's a great idea. And that that concept of of meeting up and also, um, you know, when a certain amount of people, as you say, you know, you said before, forty nine percent of people see through their eyelids. Well, you know, when it's fifty one percent, things start to shift. And I think that I really do think um, that the more people that are kind of getting involved with this and getting in touch with these aspects of themselves, these greater aspects. Um, you, you know, showing the showing the astral. Um, why not? Why not? They, 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 that's fantastic. Well, I know at the Monroe Institute, they all meet at the. Uh, they've got a crystal out there at the Monroe Institute. I don't know if you've heard of it, but the people that are really gifted and talented at astral travel, they'll. It's a crystal statue. They'll all go meet up at, and that's one of the stops I'm going to make. Once I get out of my body, I've actually been invited to an immersion with Tom Campbell in London. I would love to go to, but I'm trying to raise the money to go to that too. So a lot of stuff I'm trying to raise the money for news servers, this and that. And I'm sure you can appreciate that too, Greg. It's, it's not an easy ride doing what your spirit's telling you to do while trying to live. But if you buck the system, it's even worse. I think, you know, and when I say buck (laughs) the system, I mean exactly the opposite of what I'm. What it sounds like, guys. Some of you out there, literally, and I'm kind of going off the rails here, but hate what you do for a living. You literally hate it. It's your. It's miserable. It's dragging you down. It's sucking the energy out of your soul. And what you're doing is bucking your system. I'm telling you, if you would just start doing what your soul wants you to do. Things will line up for you. It ain't going to be easy, but it'll be a lot easier than getting your energy sucked out of you every day. Trust me. Yeah, I think you're so right, Joe. I think, as you say, sometimes you've got to get out of the comfort zone to actually follow that soul path, you know, and a lot of people confuse because I'm I'm a great believer in the path of least resistance, which I, which I already do believe in because, you know, I used to be a musician. I remember the last time. I got into all this astral traveling stuff and I was still trying to knock my head on the wall and I, I found that I kept on, I, w- I was kind of saying things uh, how I felt in a diplomatic world and people would say, Greg, why did you say that to that really important musician person? I go, what did I say? They said, you said what you felt. And I said, well, that's how I feel. And I felt I had to, I became more and more authentic and then I remember the last concert I conducted, I felt these invisible hands because I used to be a conductor and they were moving my, my hands around. I thought, oh, geez. Just get through this concert, Greg. And I remember thinking, okay, I give in. I'll, I'll go the way that my soul wants me to go. And that was clear. But even then, there were still bits of discomfort that you sometimes have to get over. Get out, getting out of the comfort zone, I think, is is part of growth. So I think um, you're you're right. You want to love what you're doing, you know, and, and you get supported then by the by the cosmos. You want to you want to just love what you're doing and and you're right a lot of people don't well i mean i've honestly i've never been this poor ever but i was Mm -hmm. a little bit poor when i worked for when i worked for a living like doing something that i hated it's i mean you i'm not saying don't go out and work a job if you love what you do by all means do it you know uh but Mm -hmm. there i found that there are so many people out there that are they're not doing anything they love to do you know, and that's terrible. Uh, so true. It's what causes, I'll put it to you this way, it's what causes depression and anxiety. So uh, depression and anxiety is one of the biggest problems that we have in this country, especially, especially in the United States. Isn't that strange? Like we're one of the biggest countries for that. 
And I believe a lot of that is due to uh, because we stopped following our dreams. And I've even taken courses when I was depressed and had anxiety. And the teachers that would tell you, now I'm not talking about taking pills, but courses to overcome these things in your mind. And the very the biggest thing in all these courses were that you gave up on your dreams and your future. And that depresses people. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, yeah, it is crazy. Uh, I, totally, I totally get that. I think, um, I think we're just taught to, to, to kind of lose the dreams and lose the things we want to do and, and lose, lose touch with ourselves. So I think you know, it gets back to why I'm so passionate about the subject of, of the astral thing is that you're actually getting in touch with something greater than yourself and you often get very clear uh, clearer on what, on what you want to do and, and who you are, getting, getting clearer on actually who you are. And, um, do you yeah. think that journeying out of the body can help you do that? Like these beings that you may meet, it seems like sometimes I think they want to help me. If I wasn't so damned scared of them all the time, they might actually be helping me, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I think they, they are there to help. I think you just got to get past those little fears. And, uh, you know, I've talked to you before this notion that we live in a, a logical realm that's a logical realm is also insane a logical realm is is defined by constriction and all these things that we think work or what and don't work and we think that we think that is you know rational to be logical but what if to be logical isn't rational i think once you get out of those realms or what i call the illogical realms outside in the astral where where things happen for other reasons like you know like uh, beings trigger things in you that you wouldn't pick you wouldn't put in a storyline in a movie um but they're kind of a they're kind of a step up from us in terms of the way they think and often when beings speak to me in the astral i've got no idea what they're saying i don't understand their concepts they're, they're just way above me they're way above me but i feel them going to my brain or certain things changing within me and i realize that i'm not trying to get my brain around it i'm not trying to work out what's happening in, in my logical spheres but i know that something's altering on other levels so um you learn to trust a different way a different brain wave if you like it's actually like a brain within the body or within the heart actually often it's within the heart and often people talk about that the, the heart is the, is the main driver of the astral body so you kind of become a little bit um less logical um for the best for the best sense you know and uh it, it's, it, it really is hard to, to mesh the two often together, but th those beings in the astral, um, even if they're scaring you sometimes, there's a reason for it. There's a re It's going to help you. I just don't like the freaky stuff, man. That's the, I, get, I think it spawns, <laughs> I'm just telling you, I think it spawns from a childhood because I saw so many wild things as a child, and just the stats even talk about that, you know, from four to 12 years old, that I, I really feel like, I'm going to see something. Or even if I get that creepy feeling, I'll dart or I'll run away. And uh, well, what, well, what did you see, Joe? Can I ask what kind of things? Uh, I don't know. I guess I can tell the story again. I've told it a, a million times. But the, I was trapped in a false awakening when I was a kid or the latest thing I saw? When you were a kid. Okay. All right. Uh, so when I was a kid, I used to lay in bed with my eyes open. Not asleep. Now, I guess I could have fell asleep with my eyes open. Does that happen? That happens, doesn't happen. it? Okay. Well, I would lay in bed and I would literally scare the hell out of myself because I was afraid of the dark when I was a little kid. And I had a bed that was facing a window and a window that was next to my bed. And at the foot of my bed was a chest of drawers. And I would always think that there was something behind that chest of drawers. Well, one night... I actually saw two little faces sticking out behind that chest of drawers. And it freaked me out so much. I, I sat up in my bed to make sure that I saw it. And my heart was racing, Greg. Just, you know, like, right. And I was like, oh, God. Right. And then they started moving towards me. And then I pulled the covers over my head. And I could feel like this thing flying, like the wings of it flying in my ear. I could feel this thing pushing me and poking me. And, um, I saw lanky shadows, I saw shadow beings, I saw fat trolls, all kinds of things, man, in that, in that room. I had a room the size of a, not even a half bath when I was a little kid. Mm. And 
uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just yeah, I'm creeping out talking about it now because I run into these things. When I was in my twenties, I would run into this um, blackness, and I've had a friend of mine confirm this for me. It's even hard to talk about, but it's just blackness. I wouldn't even call it a shadow being. It's just a very huge blob of blackness and to the point where like I'll tell you about an experience I had I'm laying on the couch I open my eyes and I can't see and you know how you can see in the dark in your house when you turn the lights off right Mm -hmm. you can your eyes will adjust and you can start seeing a little bit you can see whatever Uh, when this thing would show up it would be so black that it would be like something was over my eyes and I would desperately reach for the light to try to turn it on and I couldn't even see the light that was next to the bed or the couch or whatever I was laying on. But when I turned the light on, it would go away. That happened to me in my 20s. Hmm. i got to shut up. I'm going to be in a padded room next month if I don't quit. <laughs> no, look, I think that's absolutely normal. I think, I think you're um, – I, I want to talk about, too, in the course, these, the, the, the lower astral entities. I think that um, – that, you know, they tune in. There, there are these, these archetypes that are there that in, in the lower astral, all these, all these little monsters we've read about, and you know, Grimm's fairy tales, all those little things that they're there, and um, and so people experience these things, and um, it's a question of getting beyond them. And and so, uh, as kids, we're not retaught really the tools to get beyond them. We're not we we experience them and we get scared, and that can often compound things. Um, you know, I've seen so many little monsters. In the end, in the beginning, I used to sort of scream at them. Uh, I hit them. Uh, I'd say in the name of Jesus, whatever. And, and, right. and then it got to a point where, as I mentioned before, where there's this really sort of hellish kind of demon thing. And um, then my heart just, I wasn't an intellectual thing, but my heart just opened up. And I felt this incredible wave of empathy. And that's what it was. It was a wave of empathy. And then her face transformed into absolute radiance. That was the one who said, you know, that the kind of infer that there's no evil kind of thing. So... And I haven't been hassled since then. So I think I feel that all of that is helping us. So all those little monsters that you saw, um, they're kind of very real. But if you look at actually what they actually did, they scared you, but they didn't actually necessarily do anything negative. Um, so, you know, now, like now, little kids, if they see things, you know, parents put the nightlight on. And that's the, that's the worst thing you can do. Uh, put a nightlight on and, and, and then... It's not discussed. It's like, oh, you know, um, we, we don't want you to be scared anymore. Well, well, I mean, if you know, maybe maybe being scared is is, is letting things go. Part of that, and if we work through it, if we if we discuss it. So I think um, it's the greatest thing, as you said before. Those those four those four main things that stop people from going out of body. It's phenomenal fears. Um, uh, they're obviously entrenched in the human energy system. So for me, any kind of resistance means it's there for a reason. So any resistance within us means you get through the resistance. So the resistance is like the illusion. It's teaching us what is not. So for me, because these states out of body are so, so blissful, and they're so real. And, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a lame word, real and blissful, but you know that's what we are, and, and you want more of it. You want more of it. Um, and you have the feeling, okay, I can get that more and more. And, and more and more, it comes back into this realm. So more and more, it follows you back. So as I come down into, into the 3D uh, f- from the ast- from the higher realms and stuff, it you, you, you're conscious of the mechanisms that attempt to kind of imprison you. You're like you feel your body clawing around you, and you feel these fears come into your your body and then you realize hang on no <laughs> no and and so more and more i feel um a sense of freedom in this 3d like it just doesn't hit me it just doesn't touch me bring it on you know bring it on if if a little being wants to walk in the room i'll have a chat with them yeah see you know, Preston it, didn't had that same attitude and that's i guess you just get to that point where you're like you know what this is my space right like you're not gonna mess with me uh, you know, I can get, I get that, but uh, exactly. I think I'm kind of halfway addicted to the fear, kind of like why people watch horror movies too. You know, like why are you watching Insidious too? Like really, why do you want to watch something that's so horrid that scares the living hell out of you? <laughs> I think you're right. I remember when I was younger, I still love watching those. I, I can't do it anymore. I just can't do it. Yeah, and and 
but it's such a big thing. Like even in talk radio right now, the biggest talkers in talk radio are either are talking conspiracy. You know, that there's this grand conspiracy to take over the world and get you and all this other. Those are what people are just attracted to it. It's almost like this yeah. fear victim mode. I'm in a prison planet thing. Yeah, I guess because there, there's kind of a, always a grain of truth in these things as well, and that's what gets people. It's the it's the it's the fact that well, th- there are certain mechanisms going on, but but the way out of it, you know, if you're like speaking of the jungle theme from before, uh, no, the no, way I'm out of the jungle, the, yeah, <laughs> the way out of the jungle is not not to obsess with with the shadows and and the creatures in the jungle, but you know, to to find a clear path. So, I think. It, it is a decision. It's like coming to, to a fork in a road. Um, it's a feeling of, okay, do I want to actually ha- have a semblance, a semblance of control and, and of my life? And also, do I want to feel good? Do I want to feel good? Um, but, you know, I went through the whole conspiracy thing too. I, and, and the fact is, you know, they're not theories. <laughs> most, of them, most of them are grounded in truth. So, but now I can laugh at it a bit because I recognize that this whole realm is a game of energy. This whole realm uh, is archetypes. It's archetypes, and, and, now, and it's to help us wake up. But I do think that there is something out there that instills a fear mechanism in children from an early age. Like, I've just had, heard too many stories of, you know, a baby isn't really afraid of anything, but once you get in that toddler phase, it seems like the everybody I've talked to, for the most part, has ran into some type of weird thing they saw when they were a toddler or a little bit after. Uh, something that, not just scared, but really full of fear, like horror type. I guess you would call it terror, right? Um, mm, mm, it seems yeah. like, I, that's if there is a conspiracy going on, I think that there's something like that. Or I also think that, that's crazy. I, I don't want to believe in the deep state, but I will believe that the government's riding around in the astral realm on astral jets messing with our dreams. I'm kind of a hypocrite a little bit, I guess you could say. But um, You've got to be hypocrite. Uh, look, I'm the same, Joe. Look, you're absolutely right. There's stuff going on. There are programs going. There are frequencies out there. Uh, there are frequencies that are affecting us and affecting kids. So there is a, there are fear frequencies. But, you know, it's it's um, so it's part of us to... It's well, we can we can get through these things. Like they don't have to um, rule us, you know. So um, I just I just think there's ways. You're right. You've got to look at it for what it is. I think part of part of waking up, part of any any enlightenment, is to see what is there, to have a good reality check. So do you and, use the chakras and stuff? Like I know you, or, in your bio you talked about Reiki and the chakras. Do you implement these things in your course? Because I did. I'm halfway through it. I haven't taken all of, all of the course yet, and I'm already impressed. But it seems like you've got some type of, you know, spiritual background to it. It's not just like a scientific type course. No, it is a spiritual thing, and I think you know I wasn't consciously on that path. Um, but it, but when I got out early, I was actually shown everything I've learned has been in the astral. So I was actually shown by these guys, by this woman. I was shown the the the, the chakras and stuff, and um. And breathing. Um, so what I find is, if you, yeah, yeah, the, the the chakra breathing is is a is a classic one. So I, I do that a couple of times a day, and so essentially it's like connecting connecting to the infinite universe. So just saying, okay, I breathe the infinite universe in through my crown chakra, and I breathe it out through my heart chakra, front and back, and the, and the intention is to clear, cleanse, and activate. You start to learn that your system knows what that means. So, and then I breathe in through my heart chakra front and back and down out through my base chakra. And so I go through um, and then in through the base, out the heart front and back, in the heart front and back, up and out the crown. And, and just through breathing, and I go through all of my chakras in the same way, like that circuit, just through breathing with awareness, with, with the intention of clearing, cleansing, activating, you start to note that you start to feel good. And you do all of that, and then you start to somehow feel you've let something go that you didn't even know was there. So the, and, I, and you start to realize that, the, hang on, you, 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 your concept of the default setting alters, and you realize that the default is actually to feel good. So with these breathing exercises, I've noticed that I just feel good, for want of a better word. I'm not talking myself into feeling good. 
So then I started to realize, hang on, how come I thought my default was this, was this kind of stressed kind of uh, situation? And that is a lot of, as you say, the programs uh, that are going through. But, but, but like um, nothing can stop you from touch with your sovereign self. Nothing can stop you. It can only strengthen you. So this, this illusion that we call the illusion is a great teacher. It does send out certain things to, to, to strengthen, if you want, um, us to, to open up to it. So, look, in many ways, you know, to put sim simplistically, I feel that a lot of the fear mechanisms that are put out are to, are to kind of uh, basically program people in, into becoming uh, submissive kind of, you know, robotic servants of, of a multinational, you know, deep state-led kind of situation. But as negative as that sounds, it's also a great teacher in strengthening our fields, and it, it is, once again, a letting go. So I find that, you know, just through the, the chakra breathing, so simple, uh, giving yourself intention, so you, you, you open up the chakras. They're very real. I've seen these chakras in the astral. You see them in the astral. They are your astral organs, if you like. So the, the astral body is actually uh, really powered centrally through the, through the whole chakra system. And you actually see them there. And um, when you realize that's a reality, you know, had someone just taught me that in a class, I would have thought, oh, yeah, whatever. But because I, the first time I even came upon them um, was in the astral, um, and, and little by little it dawned upon me that this was actually a spiritual thing going on. So there are spiritual tools you can do that really help kind of um, deflate um, the fear mechanisms, because I found that the emotional body, okay, you talked about little kids being scared and there's certain things going on. We we have uh, confused the human state with the human emotional state. Now, what I've from what I've seen in the astral, the emotional body exists around the, the, the human to be healed. Now, once you diffuse the emotional body or heal it, whatever you want to call it, once you diffuse it, you become very detached. And I've met beings in the astral who are like us, who are like humans. They don't have the emotional bodies. They don't have egos. So there's there's no kind of agenda going on. They're, they're not being... Uh, so as a result, um, the transmitters, uh, the programs that run through to, to, to uh, get reactions don't work on them. They work on us. So a lot of these... Um, so they don't have emotions at all, probably. They don't have any. And I used to think they were kind of cold in the beginning. Then after a while, I thought, no, these, these guys are onto it. Um, they don't have... <clears throat> sorry. They don't have... That lines up with what Whitley Strieber was saying. I'm sorry to cut you off, but it's like when Whitley came on the show, I thought we were going to talk about the communion and all the stuff he's always talked about. But he has to totally... And Gordon White and I talked about that. He's totally kind of immersed himself in the spiritual realm and realizes that it's all the same thing. And then you hear about like... These alien encounters, it's almost like they don't have emotions, period. So that's kind of interesting. They don't. And um, it's fascinating. And, and, and I used to think that was scary in the beginning because we're taught that, oh, you know, a, a good person, a real person has all these sort of <laughs> emotional kind of triggers. And they don't. And that, that to us is very alien. We see that as cold-blooded. But I realized I'd meet with these beings again and again. I kept on being taken to them. And... It was absolutely fascinating, and then after a while, I just thought, "This is great." And and these people, um, they don't have the receptors. So because we have our emotional bodies are very fired up, our receptors um, take on these frequencies. So when you when frequencies of fear are put out, um, and this is very easily done, um, you know, I once saw a guy on a TED talk talk about how they got frequencies that can can put words into your head. You know, I mean, this oh. is beyond question. Okay, there are frequencies that, that that are put out, even low-level electrical frequencies from power lines that are very loud. Power lines are very loud. Um, so these frequencies dis disturb and, and trigger your emotional body and you get responses such as fear or excitement or whatever. Now, once you diffuse the emotional body, you're, you're not as triggered. So, so they literally go through you. You become invisible. I talked before about becoming invisible. And you literally are, your emotional body gets diffused, you become um, un, a bit of an untouchable. And so that's what, you know, on, on, a, on another level, we could talk about that. Like, and this astral awareness helps you become that. Um, you get let alone. So right. now when I pop it up in the astral, um, I get free reign. 
virtually. Do you know what I mean? So you're, I always, like a, you're like a, an, you're like a, a Mr. Thing. Smith in the astral realm. Like you got it down. Funny enough, I've seen a guy who looks like Mr. Smith, but yeah, that's well, that that well, yeah, to, and and to cert to to to. You've seen to, a Mr. Smith in the astral realm, like in the movie. Yeah, yeah. When I kept on trying to pull people out of the body early on because I didn't know that, you know, I didn't know my, I didn't know my, what I, I wanted to know when I was shocking people and going, Jesus loves you Mr. or something. You know, just Doyle, to, it's good to see you again. I could see you. You probably see so you're having fun with this, man. That's what I want to do. Uh, yeah, you want to you want to have fun, but look, you know, I got some wicked shocks early on, and and you know that's why you know, so much of my course talks about feeling good, and these breathing exercises are real. You will start to feel the benefits. I mean, it's not just lip service. You will start to feel. You will start to have these experiences once you let go of these trace levels of fear, and you you won't have the receptors. So it is to do with our emotional bodies. There there is a spiritual aspect to the whole thing. The whole thing meshes, you know. Okay. The whole alien spiritual. There's so many um, kind of layers of this. Right. But we 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 can become invisible to these vibrations that are attempting to control us that's so cool well you know what we only got a few minutes left we're on our last break here i'm i want to talk to you about uh, when we come back about some of the things you've seen which is probably what i should have started with but i want to start i want to talk about that where have you been what have you seen we only got a few minutes left guys if you want to ask any questions the phone lines are still open don't worry, we don't buy it. You can call in. But we'll be right back with Greg Duell. Don't go anywhere. Jason Lindgren from Crow Triple Seven Radio, and you can hear us 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Saturday night here on the Fringe FM. Live for three hours every Saturday night, it's a show that engages the mind, makes you think, and maybe even challenge what you think you know. Hi, I'm Jeremy Scott of Into the Paranormal, where we talk about topics that are anything but mainstream, somewhere between abnormal and paranormal. Bring an open mind and join us for Into the Paranormal. Live Saturdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. Does your basement or crawl space have a damp, musty smell? Well, watch out. That's a sign of too much moisture and not enough ventilation. And that can mean increased mold growth and the buildup of harmful toxins and gases. Don't bother with a dehumidifier. It just circulates the same unhealthy air. Now there's a better way to remove these dangers and odors. It's with the computerized Wave Moisture Control Unit that reduces moisture and expels pollution. We replaced our old dehumidifier with the Wave Unit, and in only three weeks, our basement is dry and the musty smell is gone. Wave Units require no maintenance, no buckets of water or filters, and costs only pennies a day to run. Breathe better, live healthier with an affordable, no-maintenance Wave Unit. Call 888-717-WAVE, 888-717-WAVE, or visit dryhealthyhome.com, dryhealthyhome.com. Ride the wave. Solutions for a healthy, comfortable home. Hey, it's Grace. Can we talk about something serious for a minute? Your age. Getting old has its perks. But remember, being a few years younger, you know, your hair was thicker, you didn't have so many wrinkles, that extra weight wasn't haunting you, and you just felt better. Well, we can't turn back the clocks and go back 10 or 15 years, but you can start feeling and looking 10 or 15 years younger with Nature's Youth RSF. It's a doctor-formulated daily supplement that helps your body maintain its peak performance and fight the aging process. Imagine sleeping better, looking better, and feeling better. See how Nature's Youth RSF has helped thousands of people just like you at naturesyouth.com. Naturesyouth.com. 
Imagine how it will feel when your family and friends are asking you what you did to look so good. Your secret will be Nature's Youth RSF. It's time to start looking better and feeling better. Learn more and order your Nature's Youth RSF at naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. That's naturesyouth.com. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. Poor water quality is a major health issue, and it's only getting worse. Municipalities can't keep up, standards have dropped, and pollutants are increasing. Where does it all end? It ends by keeping the pollutants outside of your home with HydroCare's advanced systems available at Wave Home Solutions. No less than the best purification materials and processes have been developed by HydroCare to provide you with healthy, clean water for drinking, cooking, and showering. HydroCare far surpasses the competition in removing chlorine, odors, iron, lead, chemicals, lime scale, and much more. Don't settle for less when it comes to your water. We'll take care of the toughest water problems for you, whether it's from a city or well source. Satisfaction guaranteed. For more information, call 888-997-WAVE. That's 888-997-WAVE. Or go to bestwater123.com. That's bestwater123.com. This is Crow Triple Seven, and you are listening to The Fringe FM. To Lighting the Void, we are live on the Fringe FM. The call in number is 1-800-588-0335. We're here with Greg Doyle from gregdoyleastral.com. We're talking astral travel, and I was going to ask uh, Greg about all the places he's went to in the astral realm. What planets, where have you been? Have you been to heaven? I want to know. That's what we're fixing to talk about. But before we do that, we do have a uh, caller on the line, I believe is... Brother Gigi, host of Shift Happens, has a question for Greg. What's up, Gigi? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, Mr. Doyle, um, you know, a big thing of mine is to, when it comes to any question or any subject that you're researching, it's very important to me to get as many different perspectives uh, of all sides of what might be going on here. And... Um, with your expertise given, I have to ask you, uh, because I've had dreams, you know, this is related to dreams, you know, I've had multiple dreams that match this description, which is um, during the dream, um, I've seen, you know, one, a band, uh, sometimes it's an actual band, sometimes it's not, but either case, it's they're playing a song live that does not exist in real life. Like it's not a real song, but yet uh, the guitar parts, the bass parts, the keyboard parts, the lyrics, the drums, everything is perfectly orchestrated. And so, you know, most people would say like, yeah, you're just making that up in your head, but this music seems so well composed it doesn't even make, I just don't even think that's very plausible. I feel like, um, for lack of a better term, I feel like I'm actually tuning in to another dimension. I don't know if that's the right word, but the fact that this music has been so well written and performed, um, which actually does not exist in real life, um, you know, what is that? What do you think about that? I mean, I'm just, I'm so perplexed about this. It really blows my mind. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's a fascinating subject. I've, I've, I've had similar dreams myself, actually. Um, uh, cause I used to be heavily involved in music and, um, I don't have them so much anymore, but I remember I used to have dreams where it was, it was perfect music. It was just, as you say, perfectly executed, beautifully composed, and it's funny because I, um, 
I was interested in that, and I, I used to research a lot of the composers, and like Mozart used to say, that, and Shostakovich used to say, they they used to hear music like a radio, and then they'd write it down. Um, and in many ways, I think that like great composers or great songwriters, musicians, I think they kind of channels on a certain level. I think that a lot of this music actually does originate from um, high dimensions or other dimensions. Um, the fact that no one can actually put a, th a finger on why why music makes us feel a certain way, um, it is vibrational stuff. So, also the whole sound thing, from what I've seen in, in the astral and in, links into what Joe asked, where I've been, well, I've been to places where you only hear sounds. Yeah, you and, know what's um, crazy about that too, real quick, is in Robert Monroe's third book, uh, the I think it was Ultimate Journey. Or he's trying to figure out where he's come, where he actually came from, like who he really is, and he goes mm -hmm. to this place where there's a, a song that he's never heard before, but it it's so it's more familiar to him than anything in the world, and he just hears it over and over again at this place. That's really crazy. Yeah, just it like is. this song, uh, the one that I have um, in mind that I was asking you about. Um, yeah, I I remember it from front to back. Uh, to to this day, and this was like three years ago. Um, it it really stuck in my mind. Wait, and didn't they make really a movie crazy. about this? Tom Hanks and uh, what the hell's the name of that movie? Where they kept having going through different lives, but they were all playing that same song. Hmm. Oh, you're right. Yeah, there I was know. a movie. I wonder if that the writer of that it? movie. Well, I I forget the name of the movie, but it had Halle Berry in it, Tom Hanks, uh, a couple of other people. And they kept living multiple lives, but they kept, you know, one of them would play the song on the piano because he heard it before in his dream and he was trying to write it. Um, yeah, it was an unusual movie. Yeah, that it was, was a trippy movie. movie. Yeah. The, look, yeah. there's something well, in the sound. Cloud yeah, Atlas. Well, I, that's the name of it. What was it? Cloud Atlas. Yeah. There you go. Well, okay. Yes, well, I guess, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Doyle, before I let you go, I just wanted to say, do you think that's... Um, what do you think that is? Do you think we're tapping into another dimension, or is this some sort of um, hyper brain activity, or how is this possible? I think it's a bit of both. I think um, I think music has codes in it. Um, I think it 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 uh, it triggers something in in our DNA, and I think it has to do with um, the the brain as well. I think it has to do with brain, um, and I think that um, yeah, certain certain harmonies actually. So I think you've you've tapped into to something that is um, yeah. That's why I talked about the the logical mind. A logical mind cannot cannot put a label on that, but it's something beyond our logical mind, and um, I think it is something that is from 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 the higher reaches of of consciousness for sure. So you've grounded it, you've brought it in. And it, it has a relevance, so it, it has a purpose. Even within your mind, as you talk to us, uh, all of the listeners here, uh, part of our brain uh, will take on that frequency of that song. All right. Thanks, Gigi. I appreciate the call, brother. All right. Thanks, guys. You take, have a good night. Too. Take care. Yeah, that was in Cloud Atlas, and I remember they, um, the, the composer had a dream, and he, he well... He was a musician who went to work under a composer, and um, in that lifetime, he was a young, good-looking gay man under a, one of the world's famous composers and was writing a song that was in his head, like that he was dreaming about, and the composer was trying to take his credit for the kid's work, but that song mm. was going through all these different lifetimes that these people lived. It was a... It was a Awful familiar. I think I kind of know what he's talking about too. But yeah, you can't put it into words. Really hard to talk about stuff like that. It is, isn't it? I know. I don't know exactly the dreams that he's had. I know exactly that feeling of, of beautiful, beautiful music, and 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 it's so well put together. And you think, hang on, <laughs> how can that? It's too logical. But you know, it's like um, you know, when we go into these other, uh, when we go into a dreamscape, or when we go into a, into an astral state. Our, our minds and and brains are working at a different frequency, so it's very difficult to translate these things into into this realm. So you know we've got to just take them for for what they are in, in many ways. But we, there's stuff going on, as we know. There's there, there are things that are 
are phasing in and out of realities all the time. So I think that they're playing a role even in themselves as, as vibrations. So the way I perceive this is, um, Oh, something just walked by the door as an animal or something. But the way I just, I perceive it, I just seen a shadow go by the studio door, but I'm pretty sure it was an animal. The way I perceive this is, um, I want to, I know that everybody wants to go to planets and Mars and all this other stuff, but I just want to be able to, to, uh, at first, just be able to move around this realm. Like I want to go, you know, up to the street, you know, there are two blocks down, there's a shell station. I want to be able to go there and uh see what everybody's doing you know what i mean if i can do that then i can slowly move my way up but i can't even do that and uh you know when Roe talks about this that's locale one where he would fly over his house and try to find his house and go to other places and i can't even get out of my yard i've said that time and time again but i don't want to go there but is there actually separate places like that or is it all just strung together well, look, no, no, there, there, there are. What, what I find is, um, see, I call that. I think in my book, I call it um, uh, real time astral. Real time astral yeah. is to me the the imprint of this. And in the beginning, you know, I found that to be also attractive to do that. Um, I think a good way to start to do it, and this is if everyone can try that, is to think of places they know really well. Um, and as you go to sleep, um, even as you're meditating feel that place as much as you can. Now, that can be in like you can imagine the touch of it. I think I talk in the course also about this notion of touching things, like the feeling of the smell of it or the how it makes you feel. So um, using, if you like, our emotional intelligence, may as well use it if we've got emotions, to, to lock into these things and to feel com comfortable. So that can often get you out the first few times to go to places you know a little bit. Um, also... Yeah, very strong intentions to, to visit people. But I found when I got out in this reality early on, um, it was interesting. I just want to see what I could do, you know, how, how I could influence people, um, what, what, what were the parameters of being. Um, generally, I found to go up into higher frequencies was more fun. So what I mean by that is the feeling of movement. You feel the astral body moving through frequencies. So it's a little bit like you actually have this intention to go, and you generally go straight up, and you have the feeling of moving through things. Now, that's when I was kind of ad-libbing. Other times things would just happen, as I've talked about the highest. So one, one amazing, really bizarre experience I had was once when um, it started with a dream. Now, this is how, I, how a dream can take you into the airstore. In the dream, I might have mentioned this last time too, I'm not sure, but in the dream, uh, I was walking, there was a bridge, and you think of what a bridge represents, you know, between realities. Uh, over the side of the bridge, this guy was calling me, now, he was a, a short, uh, bald, kind of androgynous alien in a silver bodysuit. And he had all these panels that were all different lights behind. So you could say, okay, that's some, you know, um, you could say that's some kind of a spacecraft. I don't know. But anyway, it was a dream. And I went over there and I remember hugging the person. I seemed to know them in the dream, but I didn't, don't know them in this reality or whatever. And I remember they pushed me away thinking it was a bit close. And, and they said to me, Greg, we want to show you something. And then all of a sudden I went astral. So I felt my whole field go, and I went very lucid. Then I was, um, there was like um, laser beams going into my brain. So I could see through my brain, there was like laser lights, like dentist drills, so loud. One wow. after the other, I thought, this is, this is freaky. I'm getting out of here. But then I stayed with it. Then all of a sudden, a little screen was fitted to the right-hand side of my vision. So I could see the four corners like a video screen. And all these weird kind of little hieroglyphs or odd numbers or things that weren't, I didn't recognize them to be earthly. You, you just knew it. And I could feel it like little coins dropping in my brain. So it was kind of like this, this information was being downloaded from a technological viewpoint. And then I was shown all of these implements. So like a very modern some scientific instruments, one after the other, shown like on an invisible carousel. And I thought, well, what is this? <laughs> and it was very, um, very high-tech ET. So like this experience is not so much a, a thing I went to, it just happened. And I found the really interesting ones were the ones that just kind of happened. Um, otherwise, like in terms of planets, like I, I wouldn't go myself on a planet that I could label as, even though when you go out of the solar system, you do see certain planets, but, um, and then visiting um, and seeing once again, his craft, uh, hearing 
beings tell me, you know, talking, talking, calling themselves Galactic Federation, which is really weird. I hadn't heard of that expression at that stage. You know, saying why we don't have contact with you or why we're not known to them because we continue to kill our own and all this kind of information. Uh, then maybe I'd be go to a planet where I'd meditate on and I've heard that other people, other astral travelers have been to this, this planet also, a small planet with a big red moon to the right and another little moon. They also are moved to meditate on this planet. So more and more I have the feeling all of these things are kind of like programs um, that from what I've heard from other astral travelers, and I generally research um, a, a trip after I've had the trip. Um, so I don't want to preempt anything. And other people have been there and, and, and also were moved to meditate. And when they meditated, they felt the same way, that we are perfect beings. There's nothing more, there's nothing to achieve. Everything is within us. We're not, we haven't failed. Um, you somehow, and I thought, well, this is interesting. Similar things are happening in similar places to other people who are astral travel. Now, what's all that about? <laughs> so, right. you know, so that's where I get into the view that I, that we're some form of artificial intelligence or that we are living in a form of simulation. Um, and even as beautiful as the astral is, as, as the real, the touch is, it's still moving toward a program that, like in the beginning, like even you, you, you have some experiences in the void where you see lights begin and you, you start to feel the beginnings of the manifest universe and you, and you think well why am i watching this why am i watching the beginnings of the cosmos or the manifest cosmos and you start to realize after a while um it's not happening outside of you it's it's kind of within you and it's this weird kind of uh like is a it a bit big like the bang Hawk with six elemental stones like in the avengers <laughs> well it's, it is a big bang that's for sure of light and, and sound preceding that and you're shown for me, most of the kind of outrageous, or not outrageous, or most transformative experiences, or most bizarre, are ones that I wouldn't pick. Like there are other trips I've I've gone to to visit. Like sometimes I I remember I'd pop up like a camera in cities all around the world. Like one of them, one classic one, I was I popped up and there was amazing. I was about 100 meters high, 100 feet high, and there were these mountains in the city, and I I took everything in. And I thought, where am I? The next day, I knew, and I and I remember, um, I remember googling Vancouver, and I knew that was Vancouver. Last night, I popped up, like a 360 degree camera, in Vancouver. Why? And other times, I pop up in parallel realities where they looked human, but they weren't, um, or that, or it was like another, or it was like New York in the 60s, um, That's but it wild. wasn't. See, and then other Monroe times, talked yeah. about that. Like he, they would, they actually put him in front of a projector and started showing him stories in the astral realm. Like, why am other, I watching this? Like he's in class or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that goes on. I used to meet these beings, the ones that didn't have um, uh, emotions, and they 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 talk about stuff. And I thought, you know, why am I coming here night after night, meeting with these around on a round table? Uh, and they're talking in discussions, and I've got no idea what they're talking about. I tried to take it in. I couldn't, even though I was very lucid. Just I I couldn't grasp the concepts. Then it came my time to talk, and I remember freaking out, going, what am I going to say? Then all of a sudden, these words just slipped out of my top of my head. And it was just pure. It was like, um, you know, I was talking about the state on earth, the unequal distribution of wealth, all these kind of things. And I thought, well, I hadn't prepared that speech. But it, they they were drawing from me information about the planet about my perspective in the planet so many of my experiences early on i felt like i was almost like um like a, 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 not a drone i was some kind of like um um like a, they, were, they were they were viewing the world through me it was, it was really interesting and i think back to that screen that was fitted in my brain there's some kind of et intelligence but as I said, rather than seeing it as sinister, I, I tend to think, well, this is this is kind of cool. Like, what are we? Um, these beings have the right to do that with my brain and to tap into me and to get information from me. It didn't feel unpleasant. But then when I tried to pull some people out of body in the beginning before I knew what I was doing and I was just trying to pull randoms out, I was told not to do it by by a, by a Mr. Smith kind of character. So, so, you know, what are the rules here? And And so more and more I realized that those beings that do take us out of body, I feel that they have um, knowledge into the inner workings of what we are. They may have even created us on a certain level. So 
you know, you can go with it. If there's a being that um, doesn't have permission to do so, then they, they can't take you out of body. So it's just our perception, our fears, you know. So, you know, and even I've gone back and seen, you know, dinosaurs in, in different ways than I thought. I, think I might have mentioned to you last time, but that was really bizarre because I remember seeing this dinosaur stampede and they were beautiful, beautiful colours. They had feathers and they had down and they looked nothing like the dinosaurs with the skin anyway, the surface of them that we, that science talk about. You're talking about the, and, what uh, about the hooded figures? Because that's what freaked me out was the hooded figure. That was the worst look, experience I had. Okay, once there was this weird guy. Look, I remember this guy in front of me and he, he had a hood and he was chanting and I, I stuck with it for a bit. He was just, I was presented with him um, in a kind of a dark room or a dark space and he was chanting these tones very low and I thought, well, this is pretty freaky. Now, in the end, he lifted his head and looked at me and he looked right into me and um, it wasn't bad. Um, so that was okay. Um, I've had these other things kind of a bit monstery kind of people, as I've mentioned early on, but I found that I just use whatever tools I had, you know, whether I'd swear at them or whatever and flee, whatever. In the beginning, I just did the instincts, you know, I just whatever to, 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 to get rid of the situation. Until I got to the point where, where I was battling this demon for night after night, and I thought I was going mad. I really did. And then, the, but that was that 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 heart opening when you know she said to me, "Oh, you you know you're getting good at defending." And I thought, well, they they call me by name. What do they mean by defending? And I realised that we all engage in a kind of a fight. This this fight, and um, it wasn't a logical realisation, as I said, and it's hard to express that. But it was um, that particular occasion. It was like a release in my heart, and I knew. That, that there was no other, there, there was no us and them. But it took me a while to get to that point. Um, it took me a while, a long while, to get to that point of realizing that, that there is no evil, you know, there's nothing against me. Well, I think this has been one of the best conversations I've had about astral travel. I know I plan on doing this more. Um, I'm going to put the link. You actually sent the link to me for your course. I put that in the Spreaker chat. I also put that in the... Uh, the Discord chat, I'll also put it in the show notes. And automatically to that coupon code for the next 24 hours. So, um, and as you see, then it says, Greg, the, the website is gregdoyle.podia, P O D I A dot com, takes you straight to the um, course. Otherwise, that's that link. Otherwise, gregdoyleastral.com, you'll see the course there as well. So all of your listeners for the next day get $50 off. And I really hope everyone in, enjoys the course and lets me know how they go. Well, and it's been great was, chatting too. That I was weird. We just got a little glitch there at the end. To top it off, a little glitch at the end of the show. Greg, thank you so much it. for coming on Lighting the Void, man. I really appreciate it. It was a That was a weird glitch. You've been bringing these beings up in here. But uh, no, I, I really appreciate it. I can't wait to finish the course. Guys, go get the course. And you can also become an affiliate and promote the course and, you know, make little commissions off of it, too. So that's cool. Spread the word. Let's get everybody, like, in the astral realm moving around and doing stuff so we can have a, a party and meet up somewhere in there. Sounds wild, but I'm ready to do it. Exactly. Thanks, Joe, too. Thanks for, thanks for the talk. I loved it. Absolutely. All right, guys, tomorrow night we're going to have on Mary Ducina. She's going to come back for our New Moon show. And then Friday night we're going to do the makeup show with David Matheson talking about the star myths. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, don't forget the show is produced by the Fringe FM. It cannot be rebroadcasted or syndicated without written permission. And i got to give a big shout-out to the artists, Chronox, Bundy, and Space Station, and Kevin McLeod. Thank you guys for listening tonight. It's been awesome, real fun. Good night.